Yo, First Smoke family, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, run this video up, man. Shout out to Adam Hill. We talk about a bunch of stuff. Make sure you watch until the end. He's getting high while live streaming and running the LA Marathon. Shout out to him for that. And also shout out to our sponsors, man. GrowGeneration.com, over 60 stores nationwide. You can go online or shop in store. Use the code First Smoke 10 Tell them the family sent you. They're going to take care of you. And if you want to switch to Drip, Drip Hydro, email us, family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. We'll get you hooked up, we'll get you in contact, we might get you a trial run, get in touch with us, and you can switch the drip, man. What else? First Smoke family, we do exclusive content for only the website, fsotd.com. We also do off the mic. Before and after we record, there's clips and footage that's only on the website, fsotd.com gets you access. Go on there. Like Pac says, it's like the Netflix for cannabis content. Everything from tutorials, grow tours, behind the scenes, stuff we don't put on YouTube and can't. fsotd.com is where you also get our merchandise. It's the hookup for everything we do in the First Smoke community. Also, Dr. Dabber, if you want to get hooked up, First Smoke is the code that gets you hooked up. I'm on the Evo, Pax on the XS, you yep. already know. We like that it doesn't spill. Dr. Dabber, go on the site, we have the code on there. It's First Smoke, gets you hooked up on all Dr. Dabber products. Wait to hear what Adam has to say about smoking with Snoop. Episode 102, what? <laughs> Yo, what's up, YouTube? Dobazola here. I am here with. Well, getting higher than you. You already know the highest host, Adam Hill. Hey, baby, what we've been waiting for. Are you ready, baby? What we've been waiting for. Uh, you know, we out here very good. <laughs> Shout out to everyone taking their time to listen to this because you're going to be doing whatever you want. And you're here with us, baby, so let's make it happen. Yo, what's good, everybody, man? It's First Smoke of the Day. We're back. It's episode 102. It's your boy, Pat Gods, here in the building, here with my co-host, Blackley. Big Smoke. And what? what? <laughs> we got my man, Adam Hill, in the what? building today. What it do? <laughs> hey, thank you guys for having me. It's an uh, honor to be here. Bro, it's Thanks. an honor to have you. We've yeah. been seeing you since our first event. I think for sure, Kushstock. At Kushstock, Chalice. I mean, I'm high times, <laughs> pretty much everything. I, mean, I was about to say all of yeah, them, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all the sessions, all the, Bro, the secret highlights. Sesh. Secret sesh, that that's where yeah. Blazers Cup. Yeah. How? Yeah, what year is Secret Cup. Sesh? What year are we first? 2017, 2016. Yeah, yeah, that was like the peak. That was a great time downtown. Yeah, at I the mean, club. That, that, there was so many breakout brands and shit yeah. going down. Like we weren't the plug. We were like the outlet. We were like the power plant. People came to us to get power. You know, and all the plugs were there. Yeah. It was a good networking. Not yeah. for real. I mean, there was so many waves that came through just during those times of like everyone, you know, even like the shatter days, like everybody was just, it, if it's shatter, just it don't matter. <laughs> if it don't yeah, shatter, it don't bro. matter. I remember Cali Sifco dropping flower yes. rosin and that was like strawberry banana and shit. That was just mind blowing. Like straw nana. Yeah. We had competitions. I mean, we were, it was every week for like every Sunday for 10 years, dude. We were, just connecting everybody and brands started there and people dropped flavors there. And there were kids that I was giving free trim dabs to that were in the front every week that now own their own like hash companies. So it's just crazy to see the evolution and how everyone is doing now, dude. This industry is crazy. Bro, one thing, <laughs> one thing about it, I've never seen somebody smoke how you smoke. Like, what? like a champ. Just like. I breathe. I don't smoke. I breathe it. You know, you what, know what I mean? Saying? Like, I, dude, I. I don't, know, I don't know how you've done it for real. It's fucking, you make it look easy at this point, but uh, it's a hell of a job. You know, I do, uh, I've been doing a lot of cardio lately and smoking while I, I do cardio. So it helps me, you know, be professional and be able to be on stage for eight hours and yell and smoke and take dabs. And, you know, I came from the age where we were taking red hot dabs and I was getting ninja dabbed on thousand degree nails. Like it was sizzling. We were getting fireworks shows. So, you know, the lungs have been there. We're chilling now. If anyone should, <laughs> if anyone should open a saying. weed gym, it's this guy. 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got some. I got some happening. I'm not gonna lie. When you hit me for hit me with that, I kind of gasped for breath a little bit. I like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I gotta work on my cardio more in the gym. That's for sure. I got you. You I, yeah. look. I'd be watching your your stories. I'm like, is this fool really working out, or is he just like taking pictures of the machine? <laughs> that's and that's then, what like, they say. Moving on because <laughs> like no one's gonna question it because you know you look fit and shit. But I'm like, I never see this fool actually working out. This fool never Should shows. I get like someone do a do a video. This fool Should doesn't do, do like the video? typical LA like post workout selfie. This fool Hell just nah. shows a machine and be like, what are you doing? It's that accountability post. <laughs> Like, I, you know, I could go to the gym in my building, too, and just take a picture and be like, oh, there's a gym. <laughs> the results will speak. You know what I mean? No, 100%. The will speak. I, it I, we take a, I took a little before picture. I'm going to wait a little time doing this little program. That's right. The after one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, no, I definitely, I guess I need to show a little more of the uh, the workout. What do, you, what do you flex with your workout? I see you running. Obviously, you show that you're running. I, mean, I only ran because I was doing the marathon. Like, yeah. I hate running. And, you know, I just woke up one day and the marathon was on my birthday and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> like, I'm just going to try it. <laughs> Why not? 26 miles. You know, I saw I saw uh, Rosie, you know, uh, Tommy Dope is Yola's girl mm-hmm. do it. And uh, I was like, you know what? Let's fucking she smokes. We can do this shit. You know, I was going through some shit. I was like, let me make it happen. So I started January 1st, like 2023, the beginning of the year. And I only did two and a half months in it. Just waking up and running. And that's how I trained for it. And the hardest part was waking up and then running. <laughs> <But once Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I still hate it. Uh, but like, you know, once you get past like that first two minutes of running, it's like once you start, it's like horrible. You're like, fuck, what am I doing? This shit sucks. But once you pass that, it's just we're machines, dude. Our bodies our machines and whatever we tell it to do, it will do. And we're just used to sitting on our asses on computers and whatever we do, eating, chilling, like no one's really out there. We don't have to go and catch our food anymore. You know, like back in the day we were out there catching food. They were running for miles, trying to follow livestock. Like this is dinner. Your body was fasting. Yeah. Not eating all the time. So like, it's possible. It's like, I smoke a lot of weed, but we have this stereotype about us that we're just lazy and unmotivated and we don't do shit. And you know, as I've been told, I, I hate this shit, but like, you know, that I was the face of, of some of these cannabis brands and people and this community and culture. And just, I didn't want to be a fucking stereotypical, like fat, lazy dude. And I was like, we could change the stigma. We can do shit. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of athletes, but I'm just a regular ass dude. I smoke weed all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. I just turned a passion into a paycheck and uh, I just want to be fit and you know i turned 40 and i ran 26 fucking miles while smoking weed the whole time <laughs> fucking crazy while smoking fire. yeah I you had, say smoking weed you mean blunts oh uh, yeah wayne met up with me at two spots i think it was like mile like 11 and i think like mile 11 30 and mile 18 or something i had some other fans meet me at like mile 420 and mile 710 and they <laughs> passed me like you know joints blunts uh, I was taking dab hits and I was just like chilling. I was hanging out with them for like a minute too, catching my breath. Like, thank y'all for coming because traffic's a bitch during the marathon. So like, yeah. I appreciate, where's my camera? Like, shout out to everyone who pulled up and helped me get high during the marathon. Thank y'all. Y'all are amazing. Uh, you know, we made TMZ. I got national fucking coverage doing this shit, That's which fire. was great. And that wasn't playing like you. Didn't no, know. I didn't fucking know. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to say this shit because I'm on first smoke of the day. I know a lot of people watch this shit. And I'm just going to fucking say it, bro. Uh, it was kind of upsetting because you know how everyone says this is a community and we're all out here and everyone's for themselves, like everyone's for each other and shit. Mm-hmm. But like no cannabis media outlets mentioned or like did a story or talked about like, you know, Stoner, Adam Ill fucking running the marathon. I had TMZ, NBC, ABC, Fox, like all these national syndicated Damn. shows talking about the story that picked it up, but no cannabis outlets dude and i was damn. like damn like are we a community or what dude i know yeah. we're not we're a fucking circus now because there's so many clowns in this space bro so it was just kind of like like what that, the fuck disappointing is, we got to step our game up yeah for sure. you know, i love all of y'all it's it's it's, <laughs> it's definitely not easy out here navigating the uh the shit storm that's you know began to brew since i don't know I'm, I guess a little 64. time back, but really like set in play, I would say late 2021, 2022. Since then, it's been, I've definitely felt that 
it's more of a every person for themselves. Yeah, it's when more the, than ever now. It's when all the Mylar middlemen came out. You know what I'm saying? And then they just started, you know, kind of stepping on toes and it was like a race to the bottom and the quality of weed didn't matter anymore. It was more like what's on the bag, not what was in the bag. Like when I was smoking weed, I started smoking weed the late 1900s. And when I started, you know, the bag was a Ziploc, it was a sandwich bag or it was like a little dub bag that you got from the head shop that had like hearts or clovers or fucking, you know, sometimes you put weed in there. I know other people put other shit, but you know, as, as a teenager, <laughs> the jewelry bags, right? you know, yeah, yeah, the jewelry bags, yeah, the, the yeah. jewelry, you know about that. Uh, but you know, growing up in the Valley, it was, you know, all around and you know, we were just fucking smoking weed and we looked at the weed. This was, you know, when chronic was big deal, the indoor was cool, was coming out, you know, everyone was showing their hydro, you know, I was smoking the stress and the pretendo and the, the outdo and going down and getting the bags with the seeds and shit. And then, you know, you, you, meet some people as you start smoking your network starts growing you start meeting people and then you, you understand what good weed is the, the like a lot of people only know what the best weed is is what they can get whatever they have access to that doesn't mean that's the best weed that's what the best weed you can get that's not what the best weed that's out there and you know it's just with all the hype on social media people just wanted to get that cool bag and just take pictures with it not giving a fuck what the bud looked like so it's like almost being sold on it before you even try it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the hype. The Mylar middleman. You got a bunch of idiots you know who just that, care you, about you that. You know what that makes me think of? All the all the people that wear designer clothes, but they look ridiculous in it. It's like, bro, you, you're just wearing that because it's like all Gucci, but like you look fucking crazy right now. They're not fitted correctly. Like there's no way you went in the fitting room and was like, I look dope as fuck right now. See, you just thought that you could throw on a, a Gucci set and be the man, but yeah, I don't know. You wear an American large, but a European large is yeah, way different. That shit ain't working out. Like that designer, <laughs> that that designer out. seam is a lot different. Them Europeans have a different body than Americans. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So you got to remember those things are made for, you know, Italians and Europeans. So got to try that shit on. Yeah, you definitely got to yeah, try that. They got the on. pants don't even go past their fucking thighs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new shit. The pants got to come up above the ankles. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, Where'd you grow up? I'm born and raised in the valley. LA, man. A1A. A1A. Oh, no, say it backwards. A1A. Ah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so the highest know, out of the A1A. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I was I was very fortunate. I had <coughs> access to, you know, pretty good weed growing up. You know, I got OG was what I found out first. And I was like, yo, this is when, when they, we started having names and shit, you know, it was always like chronic or indoor or outdoor. Or was it stress or pretendo? But then like, you know, the name started coming out like the Northern lights and the widows and the hazes and then the OGs and from the Valley, you had the SFV, you had the 818, you know, and you, then you started learning about all these other G OGs. And, you know, I was by bar mitzvah, I started smoking weed, you know, and then, I was a good kid. And then, you know, 15, it started being an everyday thing. And I think we've all had the same mentality. Like, why am I going to keep paying for this shit? Let me like get it and hook my homies up. And that's how it started. I bought an eighth, sold grams to three of my homies that I knew was going to smoke it with me. Kept a half gram to myself, made a couple bucks. And the eights turned into the ounces, which turned into, you know, the halves, quarters, pounds. And then you meet the mountain men that are growing it coming down from the hills. Because I was a delicate dude from the valley. I don't fucking know the whole culture up. This was before internet. You know, this was before all the social media. You know, I was on AOL. I was on MySpace showing weed and shit. <laughs> you know, that's how long ago this shit was. You guys know what MySpace is? It's uh, another platform that happened before Facebook. Shout yeah. out to Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was everyone's homie. <laughs> but yeah, I just had a passion for cannabis and like I knew it was good. I, I read up on it. There was literature out there. It wasn't as easily available as it is today. So I just started doing like research and understanding, learning about, you know, the Israel culture and how, you know, Raphael Meshulam was a uh, uh, first one to actually extract it, the THC and do studies and then all the medical benefits from it. And then I was very fortunate enough to meet the late great Jack Herrera. And he just like, you know, we just clicked and he just had a passion in him. And I just, you know, wanted to educate people on cannabis more than just like you know get high so i brought like an entertainment entertaining aspect to it and in 2009 i know i'm jumping all over the place but in 2009 i started the podcast the getting high with show and uh it was called the podcast 
<laughs> and that's when I just started, you know, edu- educating people because mm-hmm. I was a bud tender and I knew that no one knew what the fuck they're looking for in weed. People would come into the shop and there's 20 jars and they're like, uh. <laughs> Yo, family, if you want to know where to get all the dope exclusive merch you see us rocking on the show, go to shop.fsotd.com. It's free shipping on all domestic orders. We're trying to hook up the whole family. We want you guys to rock the merch and show us you're a part of the family. All the ashtrays are on there. The lighters are on there. The trays are on there. The stonewash hoodie is on there. The family ties tea is sold out. You should have moved quicker. Um, (laughs) And also, yo. Tag us in photos. Let us know you're rocking the merch, you're rolling up on the tray, you're watching firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know how you first smoke of the day. Hit us up on Instagram, first smoke of the day. And then, we, you know, it would be the basic shit, the indica sativa hybrids, the, you know, how it's grown, what the effects are, what the flavors are, the terpenes. But this is before terpenes was ever established. And, you know, just been a part of the whole culture and evolution since, dude. Yeah. It's just been crazy to see where the fucking industry is right now, bro. <laughs> what was, I mean, in a career of smoking and like a heavy career of smoking, like major league baseball career of smoking, what was the first time you ever smoked weed? First time uh, I smoked weed, I was uh, skateboarding. I was a skateboarding kid in the Valley and I was about 13 and, you know, the dudes were just going to the house and they passed around a graphics bong and, you know, with the grommet and metal and shit and it got to me and, you know, as a 13 year old skater with all your friends, you're just like, all right, fuck it. And I hit the bong and choked. And, you know, it was cool. I got high. Mm-hmm. And I kept doing it. And then, you know, I found a passion for it. Just, I ended up, you know, learning about it. It made me feel great when I started understanding the plant and using it for, you know, I was, I have, I'm all over the place, as you could tell. I got ADD like a motherfucker. So it should just help me, like, just focus on shit. Just chill out a little bit. Take it down a few notches. Not be as, you know, a lot of people say I'm super loud and abrasive and in your face and annoying. So, you know, the weed just chills me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck them. That goes, that goes along with the personality, though, man. Yeah. And like, yeah. I feel like you've uh, shamelessly been yourself mm-hmm. this yeah. whole time, which is what I like about your personality. That's what I like about your character is that you're just being yourself. Yeah, I can my- tell. You can tell when it's genuine or when it's put on. And it's like, it's you're being genuine. So it's like, yo, it's, you know. I'm a real person. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I use my real name. I don't hide behind no nicknames or anything. Like, I'm a, this is what I do. That's why, like, I have my opinions. I don't get persuaded to say shit. When I feel something, I say it. And a lot of people can't handle it. Like, <laughs> truth is, like, my opinion isn't always hate. It's just, like, this is how I feel. Like. If I'm not cool with blinkers, like I don't hate people who take blinkers. I just, I'm not down with blinkers. That's it. I have my reasons. That's it. People don't like me because I fucking smoke blunt rosin. They're like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, how do you do blunt rosin? I'm like, have you ever tried blunt rosin? Like, how do you talk shit if you, you smoke blunts? Do you take dabs? Pfft, try some blunt rosin. It'll change your life. What, explain that for the yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this a little before, before Cody came, but uh, what I do is I roll up a blunt. Um, no human terps. I just take the bud. OGs usually work the best. I break it up in the leaf and I seal it. No human terps. I put it in the press and I just squish it, dude. And the tobacco leaf acts as... When you're saying no human terps. I don't like it. No saliva. Oh, got it. Human terps. Got it. Saliva. Dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not that heady, bro. <laughs> you gotta let me know. It's just... It's and everyday then, lingo, so heady bro. boy shit. And then the hash rosin press will press the flour and the tobacco together. So, together. Yeah, so the leaf acts as like the screen, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So the weed goes through the leaf and um, you get like these tobacco terps, dude, that are fucking delicious. And it acts as like an energy booster. Your heart starts to beat. Holy Your shit. head gets, you get like this crazy high and you're like, yo, I'm about to go run a mile right now. G. I think weed and tobacco is a kind of a correlation like weed and uh, caffeine. Mm-hmm. like coffee or whatever you know yeah this is the best combination and we're we are some the, people like all three yeah we're know? the only country that like frowns upon mixing cannabis with tobacco because a lot of our country tobacco is not real tobacco it's all processed and everyone's used to smoking like cardboard paper that's tobacco but like if you go look at any culture around the world you go to europe 
You go to New Barcelona, everyone's smoking spliffs. You go to Amsterdam, they have tobacco. They have herbs in front of you, like lavender and sage that you can mix with your weed. You go to the Asian c- countries, they're mixing it with tobacco. You know what I'm saying? In the Africa country, I got viewers all over the world. They're all mixing their shit with tobacco. Yeah. We're the only ones that frown on it. But this is the best combo, dude. It's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I started, on, milk. I, no. I started on blunts. I think a lot of people... Uh, started on blunts yeah. it's just easier to roll it was kind of that time frame that era too though because i feel like but when uh, you smoking like swishers swishers like, sweet cigarellos yeah. and then dutch masters dutch, yeah I which i like the Phillies. dutches but but those are just like it's i like, was just saying the other day anytime i try to go back to that or if i go see a a friend from back home or anybody that still smokes them it's never the same it's like never the same for me you know like, yeah, I go back to Because it's like, gross. Nah. Like, it's I, like, can't, I can't do it back to back, you know? It's like, I can hit on one. And then it's just it's like, not good tobacco. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. It's not shit. good tobacco. It's like, shit. how much shitty beer can you drink? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, how much nah, shitty nah. wine can you consume? How much? How many McDonald's hamburgers can you eat before your stomach hurts? None. Like, you know, you got to... Can't eat a half one. You know, as you get educated on anything, just like cannabis, you know, we all started smoking shit. We don't know what the fuck we're getting. And then you start educating yourself, learning about it, and then... Now you're smoking like award-winning OG. You guys like OGs? Yeah. There you guys go, dude. Smoke yeah. some OG. Hey, uh, and there's a blunt. Uh, shout the best out Crown OG. Shout out Crown OG, OG dude. Damn. Big shout out Crown what? OG. Oh, yeah, gas. Yeah. Gas. Been and can I it. say gas refers to smell and not like quality of weed? A lot of people yeah. like will open up like some fucking tangy and be like, oh, that's gas. No, that's not. <laughs> that's citrus. Gas is a smell. It's not a quality. And because OG is gas, it's petrol. Yeah. It's like, you like it? You're like, man, oh, this, this forbidden fruit is gas. It's hard, it's hard to get good, good OG. OG it's days. like the exotics yeah. now, dude. OGs, really hazes, is. sours, yeah. bro. Like, where yeah. are they at? Please. Crack a little nug or two up. Roll, roll, roll it around. Roll it, dude. Roll it, dude. Right, let's do it. Roll a blunt. Oh, Take a pearl. I'm not good at rolling. I probably dude, haven't rolled a blunt since college. Brothers with the pearls, man. Let's see what's up. Yeah. I mean. I came up on Phillies, but what are, these are your so go-to? So from. Yeah, right now it's pr- like I started, you know, with the Swishers and it was like, you know, the yeah. Optimus, Peach, like a moment Grape, in time. Blueberry. Yeah, yeah, I the did the Garcia country. Vegas, you know, I did I did all the Leafs, bro. I used to go to the the, yeah. the tobacco store and just see the Leafs. No, take us through how we're going to. But these are like, uh, these are Connecticut Broadleafs. You know what I'm saying? That's like the basic leaf that we're all familiar with that we smoke. Uh, they also have like a Cuban line. It's called the Havana. It's the pearls because there's tobacco. Tobacco is just like cannabis. There's so many different land races, so many crosses. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to try a lot of different tobacco leaves from a lot of, you know, c- cigar rollers, you know, the Mexican, the Ecuadorian, the Brazil. They're, you know, they're all different. They're thinner, they're thicker, they're spicier, they're lighter. So it's all a difference, but the Connecticut broadleafs are the most common and they're the easiest. So that's what we all are familiar with. So what you do with the brothers is you just take off that little tip and then you just unroll it and then you're good, dude. And then you, the tip, there's the no mess. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gotcha. tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually just, yeah, take it off. And, and then, then you're splitting it down. No, the you don't split it. You just unroll it. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's red. It's uh, easy. It, I these come are from four, the old school side of splitting them usually, but yeah, no, these are four consumers you know what i'm saying i like this they made these leaves for us mm-hmm. and there's no mess what they wrap the inner leaf so yeah. take off the little part that's twisted at the end and right. cap it like pinch it and then there's a you'll see a seam on the nice outer leaf right there and just pe- unpeel it almost like a sticker yeah just like you would unpe- unroll it backward and then do you use the inner part as well i usually i mean some people do i usually disregard that yeah but uh i like this, this is like, like thin it. leaf yeah. yeah and they're all these are the pearls so they're all like flawless you know there's no holes or stems wow. they're not dry they're when all in ready Rome. to use let's go baby OG. i got the boys smoking og bloods baby let's go. it's about to get cloudy we're about to change the weather baby let's go definitely about to be crazy oh geez but yeah just laid back um so from go back to where you were being a bud tender okay where are you bud tending at and like what year is this what so, is this kind of because I'm, I'm sure this is where you kind of met a lot of people and made yes you know yes so there's a uh you know there's a lot of things that happened but uh i got to bud tending because i was working in radio for like a decade i was doing la radio out here i was like the the brand ambassador the dude on the streets and they discovered i had a personality so i did a couple on-air things and it was going great. And then uh, it was like a male, the demographic were males, like 18 to 40 
it was like the Howard Stern and Tom Likas and uh, Frosty, Heidi and Frank. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these names, but these are all radio people. And uh, I was just doing all their events and the radio station flipped formats to like a top 40. And I was already known as like the station stoner. I was doing segments. I was hooking everyone up with weed because uh, I was already, you know, involved with having it and hooking everybody up. So uh, when I when the station flipped formats, I started uh, I did an event at a head shop. I was coordinating like actual national radio station to work with like the cannabis industry before it was possible. And we were trying to like we were treading on on water because it was like new shit. It was legal, but not legal. And the, you know, corporations didn't really want to do it, but the local market was down for it. So I was doing like these little collabs and I met a dude. And when the radio station flipped formats, uh, they got rid of me because I was already known as a dude and they changed it as a, a, a top 40 station with a lot of 11 teen year olds. That was their demographic. So like, they're like, Oh, what are we do with this fucking stoner kid? So I got a job as a butt tender and I started at a uh, foothill wellness center in Tahunga. That was the first one. But, uh, so I was doing Full Hill Wellness Center. I started, and I started a podcast when I left the radio station. That's when I started podcasting because podcasting was brand new. This is 2009. Wow. So 2000, I started the first podcast. It was called the Adam Macadocious Show. And then I realized no one knows how to spell Adam Macadocious because the SEO was horrible. So I changed it to the podcast, right? It was, and uh, I just was bud tending at Full Hill Wellness Center. And I was just interviewing vendors that would come in patients that would come in just random people that were consuming cannabis and i started you know meeting ran networking and then i went from foothill to santa monica and then i was in van nuys and like i did like a dozen shops i, I ended up working in a dozen shops right just bouncing around because i was just networking doing my podcast and uh i met swerve from the cali connection and uh shout out to swerve uh, award-winning grower you know he got a lot of genetics out there that a lot of people are growing I, I had him on as a guest and he was like one of my kind of first like huge like cannabis personalities because he was known as like an international sea dude you know he's won many cups and shit so I had him on my show and then I started working for Swerve so I was now I was getting involved in the cannabis space and this was like pre like we tracker you know times where i was on on there like in the forums hyping up the shops and networking and meeting like other hash makers and growers and shit so my network just started growing and this is before like anyone was doing shit like this everyone just had like forums there was no like publications that were talking about cannabis you know back when you would go to the mall and look for a weed shirt no one had a motherfucking weed shirt dude now every, every <laughs> single store has a weed shirt there's so many weed brand companies out there that are printing shirts but uh so I had this outlet for people to just, you know, come on. And I met Swerve and I started working with him, helping him in the garden, helping him, you know, pheno hunt, make seeds, uh, learning about growing because I was just a consumer, bro. And I learned I still am a consumer. And can I take this moment real quick to shout out all the growers out there? Listen, dude, growers don't get enough love. They don't get enough respect. As a consumer, I try growing. I suck at it. And y'all do amazing if it's one plant or a thousand plants or a fucking whole mountainside, indoor, outdoor. I don't give a fuck, a closet, a basement, wherever you're doing it. Thank you guys. Because without you guys, none of us will be here doing this. None of us would be living this life. So shout out to y'all. Thank you, all the growers, all y'all making it happen. I appreciate it. And y'all are keep killing it and making it better. But please, can we go back to like 10 years ago when weed was actually really Sticky good and, and people good. cared about the product yeah. because these bags didn't mean shit and everyone wanted to put out good weed and not just like popular weed so please can we go back to like 10 years ago you guys are still killing it but let's get some some uh green weed back can we make green weed great again please can we make green weed green, green? sticky weed green weed I need some more green weed when the industry starts to <laughs> shift and all their focus is on watts per square foot how much you can yield and how low you can get your cost how cheaply you can feed your plants how all everything goes to how much you can produce for how little and once that starts to happen you lose a lot of stuff that goes into that plant or that we were doing before that people aren't doing the these quality, days because you got a bunch of people that don't smoke weed 
that are getting involved because now they see this as a business and they're just like looking at numbers and spreadsheets and like trying to figure out how they can make more for less and they're taking away because they don't consume it. They don't understand this fucking shit. And it's just like, that's what I'm saying. There's so many mids out there right now. I oh, need good weed again, please. Can we make green weed great again? <laughs> but might, I mean, shout out to go campaign for it. <laughs> there's, there's, you I know, growers doing their damn thing. I know that I yeah. heard of people selling like $1,200 ounces, like peas going for 12K again. Like, shout out to y'all. If y'all got it, like, make it happen. Uh, I would love to try it to see how great it is. <laughs> that's <laughs> the end of my budget right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> 12K unit? Yo, what? I mean, that's why I stopped like doing this shit because, you know, I was very. During the time, like, you know, late 1900s, early thousands, where, like, I was getting, like, six, seven for, a, you know, a pack. Yo, so if you guys didn't know already, everybody's switching to drift. Turps are a really big deal in today's market, but most importantly, so is the flavor. So everybody's switching to drip and feeding their flavor. And if you want to switch to drip, reach out to us. Family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know. I want to switch to drip hydro. We're dripped out. We're right here, our favorite place to go, you know, where the pros go to grow, at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in-store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online if you're shopping for grow goods, First Smoke 10, or in-store anywhere in the U.S. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there. Yo, we got a gift from Dr. Dabba. Excess. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can Yeah. man. The home of big things right here. And then all these dispensaries started opening up, and then, you know, everyone became like. A salesman and then the pack started going six to like fives and then 45s 42s 38s you're down to 32s and like now it's like thousand dollars like what well, what are we doing <laughs> and then the inverse is some crazy you know there's pounds going for less than 1200 and there's ounces going for over 1200 and so there's literally you know that's the difference though is when there's so much mediocre weed to find something fire it's well, like yeah. what's this worth whatever you want to charge yeah like crazy. It is crazy how the industry, one of the things we talk about is the whole industry shifted like 10 years ago to how much can we produce for how little? And you, all the growers saw the shift, you know, but yeah, bring sticky weed back. Yeah. For, I mean, and it's hard right now too, because everything's compliant and it has to go, you know, get tested and then it goes get packaged and then it goes to distro and then from distro it goes to the shop and so it's like you don't get it straight from the grower like it used to you know what i'm saying when i was bud tending they would come with duffel bags straight to the shop here's what we got this is what we want and it's fresh like farmer's market like fresh from the farmer like we don't get that quality anymore what was some of your favorite things that came through that door uh i always love like I like sours, dude. I love like the classic sour diesel. I, I mean, OGs, of course. I always loved the OG when they came through. But when I saw sours, are real, really good cushions, like a master cush or like a bubba cush, like that Afghani cush. You know what I'm saying? The yep. super heavy, sweet, earthy uh, buds. And of course, headband. I would love to see some more headband. I, I miss that. I just miss like sour tasting flour, dude. That's what, that's what I miss. Everyone's going for desserts right now. Did you find the real sour when you were in New York? No. twenty. <laughs> I actually, I did not find what the real the sour, but I did get to link up with the La Marina boys and uh, they blessed me with some uh, Cuban black haze and then they gave me this other little, and it was uh, another homie too that was there. Uh, let me see what you're smoking, I think. I was, fuck, I feel like an asshole right now. But he gave me like this haze cross that was just fucking amazing and delicious. And I couldn't wait to bring it back and smoke it in my house and enjoy it without all the chaos in New York, dude. I love New York, but I'm a delicate dude from the Valley. That energy is just way different, dude. Talk it's, about it's, it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's different. Like, I just, I just wanted to go outside and smoke a blunt. Like, all right, I'm at my room. Let me just go out in the street, chill, smoke a blunt. And there's just no like quiet area. I can't, I feel like I'm in the way. I'm just trying to like post up somewhere and like thousands of people are just walking by me. I'm like, where the fuck is 
like the rest where area. Where are these people coming from? Where where are you guys going? The, the energy is great, but it's not for me. It's like I'm glad I'm there just for like a weekend. It's yeah. like plugging into a light socket. It's like it's how long a, can you hold on? It's yeah, a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's dope. And then you though. end up walking like 47 miles, and you're like, all right, now I know why there's no fat people in New York. Everyone's just walking everywhere. For real, <laughs> they eating pizzas and walking carb loading and just trekking. What was it like working at the radio station transition into podcast? Bro, especially I, back then. I loved I loved working at the radio station, dude. It was yeah. I, it spoiled the fuck out of me. I was very fortunate enough to have like a great cannabis uh connection and having weed and hooking up the personalities and going out and just having great weed wherever I went cuz we did everything at the radio station. It was like a, you know, the the demographic was mostly male. So we were doing bars, we were doing Playboy mansions, we were doing strip clubs. And I got the job right out of high school. I'm 18 years old. You know, I asked the boss to prom with me and she came with me to prom. And then I got a job and you know, the job's 21 and over cause we do a lot of bar events, but I got it right at 18. So I was working there and I had another gig too. And I was just going into bars, just, you know, learning how to promote the product. Cause I was working with the sales team and what they promised the brands, the, the sponsors, because radio is a, a business, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you create content that people want to listen to. So advertisers want to be a part of that because they know eyes are, and people are listening. So I learned what the salespeople were promising. And then when I went on location, I learned what the brands were expecting. So I learned both aspects of the business and how to promote and I would be setting up tents. We would be doing like the Renaissance Fair, the county fairs, uh, all the fucking, I was the spokesperson for Raider Nation when they were out here. I'd go every Sunday. I would do home invasions and go to people's houses every Sunday with Fat Burger, a TV, and two models. And we would just chill in your house and watch a football game and then bone out. And you get a brand new TV and Fat Burger and chill with us. So like, I was learning how to do all these like, marketing guerrilla events and like promoting the brand not just you know a stagnant basic commercial but how to like make it involve in people and keep it entertaining you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying and seeing how you know being a part of the radio shows and them learning i have a personality and involving me i just learned all aspects being a personality being on the mic and shit and when i went into the podcasting i was like look i have a passion for weed i i started bud tending so i just wanted to I call it edu edutain people. It's like, I don't want to be boring with like monotone and talk about the benefits of cannabis and all the cannabinoids and the hemp and everything. I wanted to make it more fun and, and bring like, you know, an entertaining tight side to it. And, you know, I, the podcast is still going to this day. I've, you know, taken a couple of breaks working for other networks and doing things for other brands and, you know, helping other people set up their platform. But we're still making it happen and it's just been fun, dude, learning everything from the radio station. And, you know, it was CBS radio, it was Viacom, it was like Q's Corporation. So I'm learning all the like legal side, the one sheets, how to monetize on shows, how to make money on segments, you know what I'm saying? And then when I got to the podcasting, I was like, yo, I'm just gonna fucking do the same shit. I would go to a dispensary and be like, yo, I do the show. I, I would have a lot of viewers, a lot of listeners. And I would tell them like, let me smoke your weed on the show and talk about it. And I'll tell them if they come in to say, what you give them like, <laughs> whatever, 10% off or a free join or let them know that they listen. And, uh, you know, a lot of people started going to these dispensaries mm -hmm. and then I learned my, the ROI, I learned my, what my return of investment was. And I was like, fuck this. You're just giving me an eighth and I'm bringing you so many customers. Like I can't pay my bills with the eighth. And then I created these one sheets that I learned from the radio station. Like, segments on my show how to announce get for weed while i smoke it on the show you know what everyone's doing right now i was doing this shit like 2009 10 making it happen with these uh one sheets and just putting people because there was no outlets they couldn't get billboards back then you couldn't get commercials i think the only thing was like la gem and like high times and la gem was like a la journal for medical marijuana and it was they only printed a couple and they were in dispensaries so i had like a broader audience so then i started you know, my interviews turned into, you know, working with Swerve at the Cali Connection and helping him out. I started meeting a whole lot of other people that were super involved, a lot of growers, a lot of, you know, I got to meet DNA when I was super young, you know, Don and Aaron, I got to meet a lot of hash makers. I was smoking dabs. I was doing red hot fucking back to back dabs in like 2011. <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. So uh, just going from radio and then transitioning to podcasts and utilizing everything I learned 
uh, from the corporate world where they make millions and millions of dollars a year. Uh, I just transitioned and started doing it. And, you know, there was no like personality in our space. There was, you had like the Snoop Dogs and the Willie Nelsons and the, you know, the, the athletes, but there was no like regular people that were out there. Everyone was still scared. You know, when I was butt tending, I was going to classes on what to do if the DEA comes in and kicks in the door. Damn. Like I was at the shops when they were still getting raided. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They were, th these things were happening. They were happening every day. So that I would have to go to classes. Like, what do you do when uh, they come in? And it's changed so much now. So uh, for, it's just been a crazy thing to see what this industry has become and uh, being able to just be a personality. And so there was no personality, you know, you had celebrities. So just being a regular guy, having this platform and just giving my real raw opinion, not being persuaded by any money, just fucking, you know, kept it going and kept it original. Like you said, of just, I am who I am. And some people don't like that shit. How, how do you navigate <laughs> with the advertisers? Uh, like someone that you're like, damn, this shit's whack, but they want to pay me. Uh, I only promote things that I consume. That's why I like to keep my shit authentic. How do you, you know, how do you, um, so like I learn a crowd too, cause I don't fuck with distillate anymore. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was around when it was horrible and I was promoting it because it was new and exciting. And I was all about the mobile vapes. I was taking blinkers inside fucking seven 11s and Walmarts with back in 2012, you know, we were doing this damn thing. And, uh, you know, I started learning and I understand the quality of cannabis and I understand no one grows good weed and goes, Hey, let's make distillate. <laughs> like no one has ever said, Oh damn, this shit is fucking fire. We should make distillate. No, this will make some good distillate. Yeah, yeah. no distillate. Usually I've never heard that. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Yeah. So, yeah what are we going to do with this? Oh fuck. Yes, exactly. And Let's just hits, make it turn into distillate. It hit every single branch on the way down the tree and the final branch is distillate. And it got swept up. And yeah. There's yeah. some like, you know, rubber bands and hair and shit, but no, uh, so like I started learning what, you know, now the process is amazing. I'm sure there's a lot of clean disty out there, but uh, you know, when I was promoting it, like we didn't know any better and you know, we just got educated. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, brands approach me, you know, a lot of Delta eight brands hit me up a lot of like CBD things, but you know, if I don't consume it or I'm not into it, I probably deny it. Yeah. That's probably why a lot of people stop fucking with me. Cause like they're scared. I'm telling their shit sucks. It's tough. <laughs> what about flower wise? You uh, handed some flower and you're like, this looks awful. What do you, that was, how do you play that? Uh, if they look, I, I stopped denying it because I feel like it's really rude. So I appreciate everyone who hooks me up. And um, if I don't consume it, I pass it along to someone who would appreciate it. Cause I know a lot of people who don't have our taste buds for cannabis. And um, you know, like my dad enjoys weed, anything I give him, he loves, you know, any of my family members are just grateful. You know, the, the guy at the car wash that's fucking just finished my car. I gave him there a nice go. joint. He's fucking smart, stoked. Mm -hmm. The waiter that just served me and I liked him. Like, here's a fucking joint. And, you know, instead of him spending his tip money on a joint, he got a fucking joint. I'm not going to consume it, but I'm sure he's going to fucking enjoy the shit out of it. And it might be great for the brand because next time he goes to the shop, he'll be like, yo, somebody gave me a motherfucking crown joint. Like, do you carry that? Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smarketing, you know, guerrilla style. We out here. <laughs> that's a good way to do it because it's a hard thing to navigate. Yeah, it is. So, you know, that's, I think that's why I've probably still been around and people still kind of respect what I do because I'm not out here like hiding behind shit. I don't say yes to everything. I tell people how I feel. I'm, you know, some people love it. Some people can't stand it. Dude. You know, just because, like I said, there's a lot of haters out there, but mm -hmm. just because we don't agree doesn't mean I hate. It's just, what happened to not having the same opinion, right? <laughs> I like fucking blunt rosin. You don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Indian food. I don't know if you do. <laughs> What's it like when the first time you get hired to actually go on stage and announce something? Because that's a whole other aspect to this. It's one thing to be. Well, he was getting practice with the radio station. Yeah, but now they're like, here's a microphone. Go ahead. You, you that's know, like i think that's an you know yeah so i mean we were talking about this a little bit earlier when you make something look easy everyone wants to do it um i i've had a lot of practice i have no shame i think that is something that <laughs> has to do with it uh you know i don't give a fuck i'll be on stage if it's five people or five thousand people i'll say the same shit it doesn't really affect me and i'm a real stoner dude i i smoke weed i'm 
I'm a regular ass person. You know, I've just been fortunate enough to, you know, pave this lane and meet the people I've met along the way and grow my network. And, uh, you know, it just being on stage and just engaging with people like we're doing, dude, it's just, we're all regular people. I'm just going to be up there and just say what's up. And I know if hopefully I know the itinerary of what's going on with these cannabis events, because, <laughs> you know, working with uh, cannabis brands is exciting. And, uh, yeah. You know, we do what we do and make sure everyone's excited and engaged. Yo, First Smoke family, if you want to know where to get all the most exclusive stuff done for your brand at, it's moodtrays.com. Use the code FSOTD and they're going to take care of you. Fast turnarounds, low minimums, and they know what they're doing. High quality products where we get all our stuff done for the podcast at. Grinders, trays, rolling cradles, all types of the new things that are dropping. Go check them out. Tell them the family sent you. They're going to take care of you. Appreciate it. Because everyone's just sitting out there like this. Yeah, what do you think about uh, cannabis events right now? They're not what they were, dude. You know, I can't. They're not what they were. Look, I love meeting people in real life. I love get being out there and just being able to see because everyone's just stuck on social media and social media is not real life. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people know how to engage or interact. So I like being in front of people. I like seeing people smile, you know, like locking eyes, no homo and shit and you know, just being there. So <laughs> events are always great. You know, I did an event every fucking Sunday. I hosted a lot of cannabis cups. And uh, like you mentioned, all the fucking events that happened out here and around the world. Um, but they're not what they were, dude. Everyone's scared. You know, we were used to giving out pounds and pounds and pounds on stage. We, were ha we had a thing called a shatter gun. I don't know if you guys remember v Vader Village. Mm -hmm. When we did it, you know, it was this, this like SoCal section of brands. You know, it was like Vader and Green Wolf and like Cali Connection. And I think like, you know, there's a bunch of uh, Crown was involved in there. There was like a bunch of like LA brands and we created our own event within the event. And I had a thing called a shatter gun, dude, where I would take a motherfucking t-shirt gun and I would just fill it with like just the weed and the dabs and t-shirts. And I would just shoot that shit in the crowd. And people would just go crazy. Instead of fucking shooting t-shirts, we're shooting weed. We can't do that no more, bro. <laughs> So like, we can't make it rain. We crazy. can't bring golden showers, bro. We can't make it rain fucking slabs. So we're not doing that as the Olympics? <laughs> I mean, you down? I'm down. You got joints to give out? Well, we can make it happen. Let's set some shit on, shit on uh, fire, bro. But also, you know, a lot of... like No, the, the vibes are different too, though. Because events not just back that. then, everyone it's was smoking weed. That. Now, not everyone's smoking weed. Now you got a lot of, like, you know, the typical Chads and Brads out here that are, you know, setting up activations, but don't know anything about the culture anything about consuming and they just think they got a flashy logo and trying to pawn somebody huh you know they just and they pay like a influencer or a content i hate the term influencer a content creator uh a lot of money to show up who just says yes to everything and they think they're gonna succeed and then they're gone the next event bro it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it used to weed them out quicker now now you, there's less competition on the legal side so they can stay around a lot longer have you had one sesh that you're just like like a memorable sesh with someone that you're like this is pretty epic that i'm smoking with this person uh one that just stands out i've, I've had yeah there's many many times that smoke sessions because i was very fortunate enough to work with a lot of musicians and artists and interview a lot of people and was lucky enough to have people sit in a, you know, I'm usually on that side, bro. Uh, but I mean, you know, of course, smoking with Snoop Dogg was always legendary. I was very fortunate enough to go to a studio a long time ago in Irvine when Nate Dogg was still around and being in like a room smoking with Snoop and Nate Dogg in the studio and they're both doing shit. That was very memorable. Um, smoking with Jack, you know, always the actual Jack, not just a strain, the actual man. Uh, that was great. You know, I've, I've smoked with, it's a, it's a lot, but I mean, the basic typical answer would probably be Snoop right now that stuck out. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you ask the typical person who smokes weed, who would you want to, that'd probably be one of the top answers. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It would be Snoop Dogg. I mean, he's a legend, you know, he's yeah. fucking created a culture and fucking paved the lane for a lot of us. We quote his songs every fucking day. So, you know, he's it was cool smoking weed the whole time. Yeah. 
OG OG. Wherever he but goes. But he does like put that, point that threes. Dude, they let him smoke on TV and shit. Yeah. They're just like kind of like everyone just kind of just looks the other way. <laughs> yeah. And he talks about he's it. He's been doing that yeah. shit though. For on national decades. TV, he like talks about it. You know, he just always pushes yeah. forward. At this point, he's doing commercials with fucking Martha Stewart and stuff. He got like, a whole show. What do you mean? He got a whole series. Yeah. Aren't they like dating? I don't know. Isn't there like a isn't there something going around where they like he smashed or something? I mean, I think I hope so. so. I think it's <laughs> I hope so. I think it's a marketing ploy, but you never know. Man. I don't know, dude. You know they do hang around a lot. Snoop's slick too. They're like the same yeah, age. You got to remember, yeah. like Snoop. How old is he? Like sixties now? Fifty? Hey Siri. <laughs> hey Siri. <laughs> hey Siri. Are you are you high? Siri's high. Hey Siri. How old is Snoop Dogg? How old is Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg is 51. Damn, years old. I feel bad he's only now. 51, man. He's only 50. Yeah, crazy. Uncle Snoop. He's still Uncle Snoop. Yeah, man. he's only 50. I thought he was older than that. He's been he's around forever, Snoop, bro. bro. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. You fucking just longevity. Hanging tough. Yeah. You Long- still get nervous before certain events? Yeah, of course, dude. You know, I have a passion for it. I love it. So I think anytime you have something that you love, you always get, you just want to do your best. You want to make sure you, you know, perform and everyone has a good time. So, you know, you just get that. But, you know, just once you overcome it, you just go with it. You know, it's going to happen. You can't stop it. Explain like the secret sesh era for anybody listening that, you know, wasn't a part of all that every single Sunday. So, yeah, we. Downtown uh, LA. So it started super small in like uh we started like a glass blowing studio dude like it was like two, one two tables and like a couple people we had this thing called the headroom gallery in the valley i don't know if you guys heard about the headroom gallery if anyone brought it up it was like a secret hash bar behind the head shop in north hollywood and there were like comedy nights there and we had competitions there and i did my podcast out of there a couple times and it was just like a whole vibe and uh, when that stopped, we wanted to keep that going. It's like kind of that like exclusive, like let's hang out and do shit. And uh, it started in a motherfucking glass studio and then it evolved into like we found houses. We were finding people, random houses. And then from the houses, we uh, you know started getting warehouses and clubs. We got that spot that you pulled up to, uh, 333 Prince's Old Club. We were there for a couple of years. And, you know, it was basically every brand <laughs> that <laughs> was trying to do something or you know make a name for themselves had a table we had 20 to 50 boots at these events and it was a straight farmer's market everyone was having it was all dabs shatter crumble it was bho there was iso there was pho there was every extract possible. There was all sorts of flowers, indoor, outdoor, all budgets. You could get pounds for five hundred dollars. You could get pounds for thirty five hundred. We were, uh, and then of course I had a stage with a DJ, Salam Rex. Shout out to Salam, and we just kept the energy going. We were just out there, just making sure everyone had a good time. Because my whole thing with weed events was they were just like swap meets. You would just walk around. And people were just trying to force you products. There was no like entertainment. There was nothing engaging. And then like uh, when I was working with Swerve, I was still doing my podcast. And I went to one of the high time cups out here in LA. It was like 2012, 13, 14. It was in downtown LA, Center City Studios, like right in the heart of LA. And I went the first day. I bought a ticket. I was just like a regular patron, stood in line and got to experience it as an attendee. And I was like, this is whack. There's nothing to do. Everyone's just trying to force weed on you. There's nowhere to sit. Like no one's entertaining. All the entertainment comes later. Everyone's going to be high as fuck by eight o'clock. Everyone's smoking all day in the sun. Like no one's going to chill. Everyone's going to be fucking zombie. So I went the next day with Cali Connection because I said, get a fucking booth. And I brought a speaker, a mixer and a microphone. And I was just talking shit all day to anyone walking by any celebrities growers i interviewed them and i just did a fucking on the spot fucking podcast just right there and people started hanging out because there was nothing to fucking do at this thing except after you walked around you're like all right what else is there so i was making people do like gram globs and do like rolling contests basic stoner whatever we wanted to do at the time it was all improv shit and that evolved into me 
getting a booth with Swerve and Cali Connection every event. And, you know, the booth t- from a 10 by 10 turned into a 10 by 20, turned into us bringing our own set with a DJ and then us doing a whole fucking giveaway and having a party because it was fucking boring. So we had DJ Vic One, shout out to Vic One, uh, turn it up. He's actually now the, I don't know if we could say this, but he's actually now the uh, DJ for the Chargers and the Galaxy, dude, and the Kings. Yeah, all the LA teams, dude. So shout out to him. But he was at our booth DJing. So we were just setting a vibe. And, you know, High Times recognized it. So that evolved into me hosting and helping present awards for the High Times Cannabis Cup and then end up hosting the Cannabis Cup altogether and, you know, presenting and doing all that, which evolved into me hosting all those other great venues and events you were talking about and leading me to, you know, doing all sorts of things. It's great, bro. It's, you know, hosting <laughs> concerts even too. Yeah, concerts. But, yeah, but like, just took initiative and just was like, "You, they need this. I'm gonna just do it." So the the term influencer wasn't like around. You know what I'm saying? There was no like fucking Instagram. You know, I, like I was saying, there was this Instagram was just starting. Actually, everything was Facebook. Instagram was just starting, and you know, I've gone through like 47 Instagram accounts already. It's fucking annoying as shit. But uh, Instagram was just starting, so I started posting all my weed shit. I was smoking, bl- taking dabs out of blunts, you know, that were made out of bongs and then just, you know, doing all sorts of crazy viral shit. But, you know, uh, so it just evolved into me just creating this. Like, I hate the term influencer, but someone's like, you're an influencer. I was like, no, I'm just living my life. This is what I do. I'm just showing you guys like Instagram is a highlight reel. This is like a showcase of life. No one's go. You don't want to see people out here like showing you their struggles and their obstacles like. You want to see like the cool shit. Everyone wants a reaction. So I was just posting what I was doing. The secret sessions, we were creating a bunch of memories, you know, a bunch of celebrities were coming through. Ray Schremmer perform, DPG perform, you know, action would pull up. You know, we had so many random celebrities like out. David Faustino would come by, you know, so many musicians, athletes. It was just a crazy time to be doing the sesh with the evolution of uh, cannabis and companies and brands and people starting to show their faces and trying to be recognized and you know like now they're just not like a label now they're here look who we are you know and that i was very fortunate to meet a lot of people i got to you know get an og out there on the market that won an award you know shout out to la kush i got to do the ill og for a couple years and uh you know we got to win some shit because you know i love ogs so uh, we got to pheno hunt a little bit get to create an OG and unfortunately you know how things go sometimes you lose plants shit happens <laughs> the grows all of a sudden you know that's why I say shout out the growers there's always <laughs> shit that happens the fucking floods bugs that was a good shop raids yeah that shop used to pop off well I mean they were popping there'd be the whole waiting room be full and there'd be a line outside on like the average Friday that was actually our local shop for a little while we had a spot not close from there and I used to drive like a block up the road and it'd be right there. They had good weed. Yeah. That's what I like. I'm always They would pay out. for good weed. That yeah. was like known for growers. Like growers knew like, yo, they'll, they'll pay if it's good. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit. Okay. Where a lot of shops are known that they won't pay over this. So don't even it's like, yeah. well, why would you talk to, you know? And that was cool about that. They respect, shop, yeah. They, you know? they respect, they understood. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, so I'm saying it was like a race to the bottom. Everyone was just trying to fucking get rid of shit and produce it faster, take it down shorter. And then, then I, all of a sudden the hash scene became crazy and everyone's just taking shit down way early and producing it. It's not even ready to smoke. And it's just got to get that white hash. in. Oh my God. Yeah. Then you just start CRC and that shit. So everything's white, regardless of what you make. (laughs) Wait till they start CRC and rosin. Uh, They probably already do. It's probably already happening, dude. It's probably already like, CRC hash is going as rosin. You know, that people don't know, dude. There's like, don't you don't like, there, that's the thing. A lot of people aren't educated. They don't understand what like good weed is, what good hash is. They only know what they have access to and what they're being told. Who's that fall on though to educate them? I guess it's up to the brands or. I mean, like- it, I mean, it's, I mean, how are you going to learn? You just learn by experience. You learn by doing research. You understand trial and error. You know what I'm saying? And and we learned, you know, I started, I started smoking weed with seeds in it, some stress. I would fucking get some weird ass shit sometimes. But, you know, as you grow, your, your taste buds develop just like with food. 
Like I'm sure we all used to eat fast food all the time. Now we're just like, mm. <laughs> Cody's like, I still kill it. Nah, I can't. <laughs> it's like you said with the hamburgers and, and shit like that. Like, how many can you eat for your stomach hurts, bro? None. Every single time, if you do it, it's like you're gonna pay. Mm-hmm. Once you hit a certain age, yeah, you're like, you know, twenty and under. You're pretty good. Live your life, whatever the fuck you want. You look great for forty, though, big uh, dog. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to smoke a lot of cannabis. You got a young spirit too. <laughs> we, we're making it happen so you started the podcast and everything where where and you're and you're doing the events you're doing high times you're getting active and stuff where does it kind of lead into from there like what's what's keeping you the busiest and how are you you know keeping everything afloat um so i've been doing a lot of live streaming now i've been on the twitch platform uh chilling out just doing daily shit you know i'm chilling at home smoking so why not just Turn on the camera and just make it happen. Built a great community on Twitch. Uh, but I'm always trying to like elevate my production. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people out there making content now. It's great. You know, there is not a lot of people that were doing it back when a lot of people were scared to show their face. A lot of people were scared to show weed when I was doing, I don't know. You know, I was just said, fuck it. I'm going to just show it. It's legal. I got a recommendation from a doctor. Like, what are you going to do about it? I just didn't give a fuck. And uh, so I was just always open with my content and, you know, doing great videos is cool, but I was just want to like elevate it and bring, you know, new, exciting content. Anyone can do like review shows or, you know, get high challenges or how to's, but, you know, I want to create something that's, you know, more exciting and elevated and can be acquired by everybody, you know, be everyone would like it, not just like a certain audience. You know, like like late night style vibes. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So I started like a live call in show, kind of like Love Line, but it's called Pot Line. So it's just like every once a week, I just you know, open up phone lines and we just talk because, you know, a lot of people don't have someone to talk to. They don't, or they have questions or they just want to just, you know, have a place to just vent. So I just open up phone lines, let people talk. We smoke weed and just shoot the shit. Um, I've done crazy. 420 productions i did like a five hour 420 live stream where i hit every 420 across the north american continent starting with like nova scotia at 1220 all the way to the west coast and every 420 we had a new surprise i did the highest shopping network which is my like a uh, uh, home shopping network where i do like cannabis products and i like show the features use them take call-ins order them when you order them we talk about the use of the products so that's been exciting um, and just, you know, bringing back the podcast and making sure, you know, we still stay fresh and exciting. You know, how, how long do you do Cannabis Talk 101 when you were over there hosting and stuff? Uh, I've been just a guest there a couple of times. I okay. have had a hijink show at Cannabis Capital that I do once a mm-hmm. month, which is like the ridiculousness of weed. I guess we would say I just we watch viral videos. I have a guest. We interview them and. We do reaction videos, which is, you know, what we all do when we get high is we watch fucking videos. You often, how often do you scroll, catch yourself scrolling on like IG or YouTube or TikTok and just watching random shit? You're like, yo, what am I doing with my life? Where do people we're all find on that? that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do people They've find hacked everyone's brains? It's way too late for you. Don't yeah. worry, AI is next. Oh, please. I've been listening. I'm going to say it now. There's this AI Jesus on Twitch and it's like, a uh, live AI Jesus that responds to people as you talk in the chat. You got to go Jesus and then you ask him a question. And it's a, a AI Jesus. It's not, a, it looks real. And he just responds to everybody as Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. And you could troll him as hard as you want, talk about whatever you want, and he'll read your question and then respond as Jesus would, dude. So, no like, way. it's been. AI is, is they went out here. all the way to the max. You think it would start with like celebrities, wow. like I want to hang out and talk with Bob Marley or something like that, right? And then it, they were like, "No, we're gonna do Jesus." Yeah, well, I, Jesus Holy is the person cow. I would love to get high with. Jesus, are you kidding me? Oh wow, that's like that's the only crazy. If I could smoke with anyone dead or alive, it would like Jesus is my number one. I want to hear the story from Jesus himself. Everyone knows the story of Jesus. We all know who Jesus is. We've all heard the story. We've all heard the translations. I want to hear it from his like. Yo, what really happened, bro? Let me know the truth. What the fuck's going on, bro? You good? Here, smoke this shit. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Hey, tell me about it. Besides, who's your plug? Is it really Nicodemus? Because he was all spicing herbs, dude. Was he your plug? 
See the one that got you all the weed? <laughs> you know a decent amount about that because you had mentioned earlier about like Takun Ulam and like what was going on over there in Israel. You're pretty yeah, religious. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was born Jewish. Um, I have a, I had a medical prescription in Israel when I went there. I was able to acquire one, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I just, I just feel like, you know, the Bible and those stories, everyone knows, everyone relates to, and it'll just be cool to hear what Jesus says. Cause we all have our translations. We all have our versions of what happened. Everyone can hear what they wrote and realize it's been translated for thousands of years. So like what really happened? You know, was she really a virgin? She was always with three dudes, dog. Like, let's get her on Mari, bro. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Can we get God's DNA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> How do you feel about Twitch so far and like all the changes and stuff that's been going on with that platform? So uh, Twitch has been cool for me. I've been on it. I, I started Twitch because of the pandemic. You know, I was, I was doing events. Every week we were doing events. And then all of a sudden that shit stopped. You know, and I was doing the IG live for a little bit, but it wasn't as there wasn't as many like things Features. I could do on IG. It was just like a camera and that's it. And I've been told about Twitch since for like years, but I always thought it was gaming. So I never really like got involved. But when I went out, when we were all stuck at home, I was like, fuck it, let me try this shit. And they've been really cool with the consumption of cannabis. I've been doing random shit on Twitch. I've been also, you know trying to expand my experiences on there doing like, like I ran the marathon while live streaming. I had the stream going the whole time. And uh, that was pretty exciting. You know, I take it on set with me sometimes to get BTS. Uh, I do, you know, workouts, hikes and shit while I live stream. Um, they haven't really done anything with me for cannabis. I know they dropped some new terms, but I streamed today. I fucking worked out and smoked a shitload of weed. and. I think I'm fine, <laughs> but I so, enjoy the platform. It's so huge... you work out live on the stream? Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You just set it up, and you got a you got a setup or something that you hit. Or so, like, like in in 2022, I got challenged. One of my viewers said, "Do like a hundred days for a hundred minutes." I was like, "Fuck it," because you know I'm at home. There ain't nothing to do. So I would just watch like YouTube videos of like trainers on YouTube, and I would just follow along. And they would do like whatever circuits: full body, upper body, legs, cardio dancing i would end up doing some like like bangra and like some some fucking bollywood shit i would salsa merengue i would do all sorts of like cardio dances and just working out and i would do it for like 100 minutes and the 100 days were up and by that time it was already a part of what i was doing like a part of my routine so i you just kept it going shit. yeah it was already like i'm like waking up like let's go i want to stretch i want to fucking do some shit i ended up losing a lot of weight Cause, uh, I didn't change my diet at all. I still like to eat. I get the munchies. I smoke weed and food brings me happiness. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure food brings everyone happiness. So I'm not trying to like count my carbs and see what the fuck I'm consuming. So I just went harder the next day. I was like, fuck it. I had a bowl of cereal last night. Let me go fucking do it like 20 more minutes. And, uh, it just, you know, turned into a regular thing for me. And then that's when I decided to run the marathon. I woke up one day, like, fuck it. I trained for a I like I worked out for I didn't train for a marathon, but I worked out for a whole year. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I just said, let's run. Running is way different than any type of working out. I just want to let you know. And if you do decide to run, get shoes, please. Number one thing is get shoes. If you do decide to run, don't fuck your feet up. What, what, what's your <laughs> shoe suggestion? Uh, I would. I mean, you have to always go uh, like a half size bigger than your original shoe. But you got to know what kind of foot you have. Like, how high is your arc? Like, are you flat footed? You know, how wide is it? Is it narrow? I actually was running and my feet were like getting all jacked. And I was like, what the fuck? And I went to the store and they do free laser uh, fitting of your foot. They analyze it. They give you a 3D. Uh, and then they tell you how big your sh foot is, how wide it is, what type of shoe you need. And then they give you shoes fit for your shoe, for your foot. So I bought a fucking pair of those. And... It was it. It was money, dude. It made me want to run more. What's the, what's the store? 
Uh, it's, it's called like Roadrunner. Shout out to Roadrunner. You know, let me know. We already got a whole community ready. <laughs> <laughs> we, need the, we need the 5K smoking. Um, yeah, or something, yeah, right? Something. Like some something, man. These I'll tell you, I'll tell you what though, these cannabis media coverage companies better step up their game. <laughs> yeah. Get my dog running the fucking marathon. Is, bro. Including us. They we'll be on a now. repost. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know. I feel bad now, but I like was watching all my personal account and shit. So <laughs> yeah, I'll run this. No <laughs> excuses. No <laughs> excuses. It's all right. it's all right. well, I wasn't meant for that. It was just like how yeah. where the industry it made is. You think know we what need I'm to step our game up, just covering cool. shit from the culture. Period. Yeah, just you know, period. And in, in a sense, but that's it's a lot. You know, this content shit's a lot. You Listen, could dude, pack. You, know, you could have agent, behind us. A need, lot, bro. I'm a free agent. You know, if you need like an on field representative, you know, I'm out here for the culture. We can make it hey. happen. Listen, what? we're <laughs> trying to build. We're ready for real. I'm gonna strap some GoPros on pack and have them run behind you next time. We film yeah, the whole. I thing. got a whole gimbal setup that I run with. I put it in my little vest. We're gonna have to get a workout now on the live stream now. But we I'll gotta keep. Workout. I don't know, but you're collab. like. See, I'm just trying to get like you know, stay slim. Sit the weights and, and we can do a little cardio. Okay. Just, Are you gonna? I don't go, want to run five miles. You're gonna meet him halfway though and smoke during it. I mean, before and you after. You gotta meet him halfway. Yeah. Fucking daring is tough, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I told you, I was like, I don't know how you're doing it, man. Like, running a marathon and smoking weed. Just one more. Like, if someone came at me with weed, I'd be like, get the fuck. Like, <laughs> I did a cold plunge while taking a dab hit uh, the other day. I got in the, Bruh. In the cold oh, plunge. Oh, so you held it underneath. So, so uh, it was like 37. I don't know what degree. So it was like 30. It was my first time doing a cold plunge, too. And I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna get this shit. You know, this is, I did like a whole gym workout video where I'm like in the gym working out because this gym is allowing me to consume cannabis. So I was like, fuck it. Let's, I'm gonna do a whole like weed and workout routine. Like y'all wanna sign up to my classes, pull up. We'll stretch in, we'll smoke. We'll fucking get some cardio in. We'll do some fucking real cush ups. We'll do some real puffing curls, bro. We can make it happen. I do wall sit dabs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it takes about a minute to take it. It's about a minute to take a dab, right? So what I'll do is I'll get my wall sit and then the, it depends if it's an e-rig or a torch and you just get it ready and then hit it. And by the time you're done with the dab, it's been about a minute and then just get up. You don't even realize you've been doing a wall sit because you're focused on the dab. He's the flip side on the flip side. You see now guys will take a dab and then they fall out and fall through the whole counter. You've seen those oh, like viral yeah. videos where yeah, they take one sure. dab and then they'll oh, start man. to go backwards straight through three counters of weed, just, smash yeah. everything. Break this guy's display. over there doing dabs on wall sets <laughs> and then doing cold plunges. I, like it's yeah, the complete so I the opposite. Plunge. I got in and like it, it was it's fucking it. it was my first time doing it. I've done cryo before. You've never done cryo. No. Have you done cold plunges or ice baths? I have. I have okay. done a cold plunge. So it is it's it's, it's no joke. It's hard, bro, because it's wet and it stays on you. Like cryos, like cold air. This is like, it's hard. In it. So I got in it, right? Just to my neck. And I just held it and I try to get my breathing because your body's just kind of like, what the fuck are you doing, you idiot? And I'm sitting there and then I'm like, all right, I got my carta and I hit the carta, right? Took the dab, exhaled. And then I was like, all right, let me dunk my head. And then I, when I went under after the dab hit, Cause when I, after the dab, I felt cool. Cause you know, when you dab, you start sweating, you feel it. You're just like, your body starts to heat up. So it was like a good counter. And then I dunked my head and that's when my body went into shock. And I was like, fuck this shit. And I just hopped up out of it. And then I worked out for an hour Holy <laughs> while shit, smoking though. weed. You felt that crazy though, huh? Bro, the cold plant, did you dunk? Do you go full body? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no joke. Like, Once I put I, my head in, I was like, that shit is, I'm a valley boy, dude. I'm a delicate but, but dude. But from the dab, did you feel like extra like? I'm a professional. It was, it was fine. Because I, I know what you're it, saying about it getting like warm it just down got there. Warm. And, and you're under the, the And I'm water, compressed so and I'm like, cold and my body's rushing to my that's heart. That's how shit busts. Like it's, it's a lot. <laughs> you the trainers were looking at me like, you <laughs> You ready? Everyone's looking at you like a maniac. Yeah, the trainers are like, you Side by side cold plunges, the three of us, fat I'm dab. Down, and then we gotta, gotta go, go under. <laughs> let's, let's do it. I mean, I'm gonna drop the video soon. I dropped a little teaser, but we're yeah editing that right now. I did a whole like weed workout montage. Like fucking... You know, barbell hits and show. Mm -hmm. I did everything. I had the fucking How'd you uh, feel after? sled. I had the sled and I ran the sled to my uh, e-rig. And then when I got to the other side, it was already ready and I hit it. And then I came back and then I ran again and I hit it again. It's good, dude. I'm working on my lungs. I felt great. I took it. I ate great. And then I passed out. <laughs> you're definitely working out your lungs. Like you're yeah. building a big tolerance. And, and, and then a lot of these workouts you're doing are like cardio based. 
Yeah, I mean, I'll do weights and shit, but you know, I gotta. But keep that's that like stamina. a different level of yeah. like you know, to train for cardio yeah. is way harder than to train weight train, in my yeah. opinion. When I take a dab and I just get smacked, like I'll just pick up the du- the bar- the dumbbells, bro, and I'll just like just zone out because I can't do no cardio when my eyes are crossing and my head's all. I'm like, I ain't running. I'm feeling a little woozy here, bro. Yeah, it's gotta be a lot sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have that shit. Down. I mean, you build up to it. I mean, it's not, I don't do it every single time, but you you're going to host a class like 10 people are going to fall. Out. <laughs> yeah, I actually, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to post well, a little. actually, the class ends up getting wheeled out of no, there. We'll actually have the first ever have mar- a, have marijuana a, related up for my first class. I got Dude, you. Dude, have, have a couple paramedics done standby, bro, with the oxygen machine. Uh, we'll have an oxygen machine. For sure. More joints. Finish with the oxygen bar or something. Mm-hmm. I just picture the marathon. It's just like, I love that. This dude yeah. running and then setting up at different sites and like yeah, that's why I love about Twitch too and like that whole community because they came through and uh, you know we were talking about it throughout the stream because they were following my journey. You know, I was doing the stupid like seven miles before seven a.m. campaign and you know ten before ten. I don't know if y'all were watching that shit. I was, but the hardest thing is waking up and doing it. But knowing that I had the marathon and I like told myself I'm gonna do it. And then where I fucked up is I let everyone know I was going to do it. Because once that happened, there was no like, all right, fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> fuck this shit. I'm out. So once like I started telling everyone, I was like, all right, now I have to do it. And, you know, being able to talk to the, you know, viewers and the people that fuck with me and let them know my path. And we went over the map. I'm like, I want someone here. I want someone here. I want someone here. Like I mapped out where I want everyone so I could get high. Because I figured out like after like, you know, four miles, I might want a hit or two. And then like. I was doing like 420 and then I did 710 and then I did 1130. You know, you all know about 1130, right? Mm-mm. 11. That's uh, my whole holiday and my whole thing. Cause you know, I love blunt rosin. I love mixing. I'm all inclusive. You know, it's not, I'm not all flour. I'm not all dabs. I love everything. So like 420 is great. It's motherfucking what we know. 710 is that newer era. You know, when I'm Jewish, I added them together. I got 1130 cause 420 plus 710 equals 1130. 11.30 is a way better time. Like 11.30 a.m. is way better than 4.20 a.m. Like I'd rather wake and bake at 11.30. Same thing with p.m. We're all awake at 11.30 p.m. You know, fuck a 4.20 p.m. We're working. We're in the middle of our day. Fuck that shit. So I created in, in November 30th, you know, April 20th is cool. July 10th is hot as hell wherever you're at. But 11.30 is like the holidays. Everyone's chilling. Weather's cool wherever you're at in SoCal. So I created like a holiday. I've been doing like two or three events now where every November 30th, I create like a weed and hash celebration. And it's just kind of like my personal sesh where I curate activity. Like last time I had a carnival theme. I had shout out to Wayne for helping me out. We did like a carnival, but of course, carnival, because, you know, we out here make it happen. People could win some alcohol. I had some alcohol to get away. Some I had, alcohol. I, I had, uh, you know, I had a couple Tell brands. Tell about what you did with that. I had a couple That's brands. All, all organic, me. right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get into oh. it right now. So I did that carnival, and it was like an 11:30 event on November 30th, and we just celebrated weed and hash, and everyone got high, and I had carnival games for everyone to play. You know, I had a sushi chef, I had a DJ, I had a place for people to sit. I had a place for people to sit. If you're doing events, just make sure they're seating, please. Thank you. And food and drinks. Food, yeah, Holy food, fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Not we just don't want to listen to reggae either. At the I do, but they don't. Nah. Reggae rap, something all the time. I mean, we want to listen to some recent shit and, but, uh, and invite some ladies. <laughs> invite some ladies. That's the biggest one. The ratio. I'm not gonna lie. Some of those San Bernardino events, I used to get mad. I I would get worked up as like yo the parking bro, lot events. This is insane. <laughs> he'd be mad at me. This is insane because <laughs> this guy's worried about the workload and shit. And I'm like, man, I don't even. I, this is the last thing I want to do right now. And but it was like a necessity. But it's just crazy how like we all love the plants so much that we'll go to like the middle of the desert in California. Yeah, that's the crazy part. Like, and literally, we people went, are passing out and shit. Bro, I've I've lived in I California. Literally watch people pass out. I've lived in like, California oh, my whole life. And I never, ever would have been to Adelanto, California. I've driven to Vegas <laughs> hundreds of times. Never would have been to Adelanto. But you're doing a weed event? Everyone's going to this fucking little town in the desert where there's a federal prison doing a weed event. Like, what? <laughs> Out weed, in the middle of that's nowhere. what I'm saying. People will go anywhere for weed. It's crazy. It's, it is crazy because like, I feel like some of the first big weed events we've had in, in LA was like PuffCon almost. 
Like that was like the first where I was like, oh, we're in the middle of downtown. They sectioned the whole thing off. That's where the first High Times LA Cup was. Really? That Center Studios right there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's where the first. Great area. Dude. Yeah. But then there's a school right down the street, so you couldn't do events anymore. They did like the X Games there one year. They did or a bunch of shit. Too, and that. I was like. Oh, they film a lot of movies yeah. there. It's like a LA studio like spot. So it's a cool venue. Where's the sketchiest place you've ever smoked? You have sketchiest place you're like wow i smoked in costa rica or here or there um I think, at your mom's house <laughs> damn. see what i get see what i see man the sketchiest uh i, I mean i get high everywhere bro yeah like i've smoked i think probably when i was in israel just like in the middle of some forest dude was like just a bunch of random locals. That sounds pretty sketchy. Yeah. And they just took me, like, I was just hanging out with the, you know, the locals. I went back when I, this was like, I think mid twenties and I just fucking said, let's go. And they just, we all got in a car and we just drove into like this forest. It was like a 40 minute drive into like nowhere, dude. And there was just like a bunch of people there and they just had weed and hash. And I didn't know who anyone was. I just knew like one person. And, you know, it was like in, you know, Israel's a little like the territories over there, are a little sketchy. You know, there's a little communities out there that, you know, don't really fuck with the, there's a lot of politics over there. But so I was like, didn't know where I was, didn't know how to get to anywhere. There's no fucking Uber. There's no fucking like transportation. And I'm just sitting there getting high with these fucking local strangers just in a foreign country. What led <laughs> up to that? <laughs> Uh, you know, just hang out. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cool guy, bro. I just like to well, experience. Well, they were like, yo, you want to smoke some weed? And then They're like, we got a little thing up. going on. It was just like a little hangout, bro. They just, I guess it's like a regular thing they do. They go they into go the, the fucking forest nowhere. and they yeah. consume drugs and build a little for fire and they have like a sounds car like plane. Home. Yeah, I was about to say, that sounds pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, it was a great time, but yeah. I was like, there was a moment where I'm like, where the fuck am I? What the fuck am I doing? I have no way to get home, no one to call, like, this is as quick as a high set in. You're like, mm. hey, we're deep in the forest, huh? Well, you yeah. start asking questions. What was the weed and hash like in Israel? I mean, uh, I've gone multiple times. It's getting better. There's a lot of greenhouse out there. Uh, it's mostly medical weed. Um, you know, if you know a couple of people, it's like anywhere in the world. If you know certain people, you could get good weed anywhere. You know, I've been all of a sudden the East Coast has a lot of amazing weed. I got some great weed from like Rhode Island and fucking <laughs> like uh, Massachusetts has some great weed. So uh, this like there's great weed, but Israel was just the weed I had. It's mostly hash, you know. They like the Moroccan or the Lebanese, you know. It's all easy to get over there. But I just learned how dirty that shit is, you know. It's not the cleanest. That water hash out there in the Middle East ain't clean, you know. They be putting some other shit in there to make weight. <laughs> be funny some, they they know who's buying it you know, they we know who makes it and then they know what country is going to so they know what to do it they feed it to their fucking sheep fucking cross the borders the sheep shit <laughs> you pick up these little fucking saran wrap shit balls that's not shit but looks like shit <laughs> yeah. wow it's that good hash <laughs> giving up that, all that the game. real hash huh <laughs> giving up all the game that's actually that's, how they compress it properly yeah <laughs> and that's why it gets all like compressed and yeah, you gotta make it. Goat like, shit terps. Yeah. <laughs> the goat hash. Real uh, shit. Yeah. So tell crazy. tell us though about this and tell us about some of the oh, projects so like, you have launched. So the alcohol, yeah, yeah. You know, we always trying to make shit happen. So during the pandemic, um, you know, we all love glass and we all make hash and we need to clean our equipment and clean our utensils. And there was no alcohol anywhere. Like you go to the stores where you usually go, the big box stores, and it was all out. They would have like even 50% was out, you know? And no one wants that 50%, that watered down bullshit. Um, and I got a drum. I was fortunate enough to get a drum and I started uh, bottling it myself and printing like Avery fucking templates on my fucking bottles. I had gallons and gallons in my house where I'm smoking and I would just hook up my friends and family that needed it. And be like, yo, I got, I got a drum, boom, boom. I got rid of it. I got another one. You know what I'm saying? And then the factory where I got it from is like, yo, what are you fucking doing? How are you getting rid of all this? <laughs> like, what? And I was like, oh, I'm just like bottling it. And then like, I'm, you know, helping people out and hooking up my friends and family. They're like, well, oh, by the way, I called it alcohol Cause you know, it's Adam ill it's alcohol. So I call it alcohol. They're like, well, we can, you know, do everything for you. We can bottle it, we could sticker it, and we could ship it. You know, it's not, it's just gonna cost a little bit more, but we could just fulfill everything for you. 
And I was like, I don't have to fill up these individually and label them and you guys will take care of everything. Like, let's fucking run it. So uh, I was, you know, at first it started with friends and family. I did pop-ups. I shout out to uh, Dab Nation. I used their store as a pop-up one time. I was all fucking gloved and masked up and I had people drive up to me and order gallons and 16 ounces as they wanted. And I was just like helping them out. You know, I'm trying to pay my bills, dude. So, and I know people needed it and I actually had a source. So uh, uh, I did a pop-up, sold out, got another drum. Factory was like, we'll help you out. And uh, now it's available. And, you know, if you want it, you could get it. AdamIll.com. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, okay. you guys need some? That's yours if you need some alcohol. I see you guys got some Yo, glass here. Yeah, we do need some. Yeah. yeah We're yeah. cleaning these doctor That's that 99 This guy that never cleans. He, yeah. he takes dabs and never cleans. I was about it, to say, so what's up with the dab, dude? They got that one high over here, dude. Shit. shit gets crazy. Can it's I dab some of this? Nah, dude. Damn, I ain't got nothing on, left man. for you, bro. Share a little Cali Blaze. I didn't smoke any what? of it. Exactly, <laughs> bro. Starting to think yeah. you might have. So it's like I got that 1% clout in yeah. there too, because it was 99% ISO and Take we added 1% clout. 1% clout. Here. 99% ISO, 1% clout. Yeah. I love you. That shit got deleted, like social media, you know? We love social media, right? The necessary evil. <laughs> What's up? You ain't got a tool neither? I don't have a tool either, bro. That's what? what I was going to How are you guys dabbing with no tools? This guy, What's going man? on, man? This He's that crazy. dude that shared a desk by you that showed up every day with no pen, no paper. I'd no have a nothing. pen and paper, but I wouldn't like, keep test. looking over Here. and be like, yo. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> we prepared. Holy shit. We, we stay ready. What's the next project? What else what, are you working on? What's the next on? move, big dog? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I've just been trying to focus on me again. You know, I've been helping a lot of brands, a lot of people. Um, I've been doing some new shit. I live stream from Apothecary every week now uh, just to show people what a California shop looks like. I've been do I did a, this Connect Four challenge recently. I'm really good at Connect Four. I don't know if y'all understand. I'm Hasbro recognized. I'm a Connect Four world champ. That's one of the top shops in SoCal. Apothecary? They've been around forever. Yeah, yeah. They're, great. they're a great shop. But uh, I used to do a thing where you come in and if you beat me in Connect Four, I would give you a half ounce for free. So uh, that was exciting and I would live stream it. Um, I'm bringing back my podcast. I do the pot line. I'm, you know, working on other show ideas and concepts. You know, I'm sure we film a lot of things. Not everything gets released, but, you know, I've been hosting a couple of game shows. A little pi We shot a couple of pilots for game shows and like you know other type i don't know if they're ever going to get released but i'm just who who is that with with the game show and stuff uh so we shot them but they're they're shipping them you know they're shopping them out right now yeah, to yeah. networks that want to pick them up but these are like real produced fucking you know budget these are budget projects so you know that's what you, you guys know that's what you need to create great content is good budget and uh you know, we'll see what happens. There was like a rolling game show that I'm doing. There was uh, like a dating show I did. So there's just a couple of things coming. I don't know how much mm -hmm. of it we should talk about because I don't know how much is going to get released. But I'm just trying to like, you know, stay fresh and new and relevant and keep, keep shit exciting, dude. You know, there's a lot of people out there making content now. It's like, what makes you different? What's going to make you stand out more than, you know, all these people that are just doing massive consumption videos or just you know like in mm -hmm. reviews what about to all the people that like when they see you on stage and they see you making it look easy like you have any advice for young guys because like a lot of you know a lot of people would love to do it but it is hard it's hard to like just any advice uh i would say uh i mean make sure you're passionate about it you know because if you're passionate you don't give a fuck what anyone thinks because you love it and they could all lick a dick uh, but uh, yeah, just <laughs> you know, if you love what you do, fuck them. Um, you, your crowd, you will build your audience. You know, everyone, there's someone for everybody. You know, sometimes I watch people. I'm like, how do people fuck with this guy? Like, I don't get it. But I'm not everybody. You know what I'm saying? There's other people that enjoy that. So don't be worried about your numbers. Just you know, be passionate and be original. You know, don't worry about what other people are doing. Do what you want to do. Uh, just yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to be consistent, you know, because if once you stop, like I felt it a couple of times, we've all had obstacles in our life. You know, I've dealt with a lot of shit, especially, you know, getting deleted, dealing with whatever bullshit people say on the Internet. And uh, 
you know, you deal with a lot of things, but as long as you're consistent and you show, you know, <laughs> the thing is I'm real. I'm a real fucking person. So I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm not going to hide behind, you know, a name or no screen. So <coughs> I'm just, I'm just, just be you, dude. Just be you. And you know, that shit will happen. Just be consistent. I mean, I've been doing this for a minute, bro. Oh yeah. I met, listen, this is a crazy story and it makes me feel really old, but I was recently at the sesh and I met a fellow sesh goer that went to the same high school as me and we graduated from the same high school. Right. But the year I graduated was the year he was born. <laughs> he was born the same year I graduated. Get you some pack. Get you <laughs> a little bag. Yeah, rip. So, Dr. Uh, Diver kicks, bro. Yeah. So I've been doing this for a minute, you know, so it's just stay consistent. Yeah. You know, I'm look, I've been doing it. And now I'm sitting here in this chair where legends have been here. There's been amazing growers who've weed I smoked, but late amazing hash makers. I know recently my boy Marcus was up here. You know, I've been smoking his hash for over a decade. <laughs> he, he was one of the first sesh winners. Uh, you know, there's a lot of musicians here. So, you know, it's just stay consistent, be true, dude. And you know, just make sure you smoke weed, though. That's like a, another one is smoke weed, bro. Don't bullshit and don't be a fake smoker. It's like right? uh, you'll get exposed. That's why there's a lot of people that aren't relevant anymore. It's like that skateboard era where, uh, you know, they're like, man, you don't even skate, bro. Mm -hmm. The poser. But I got yeah, the, yeah, I the, got the Jinkos, though. The poser. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got yeah. the Jinkos Look, with the, the chain. Walks. That, yeah. that, that ain't going to cut it, man. Nah. You, you, <laughs> yeah. I'm really good at ollieing though. Fucking poser, dude. <laughs> can't even shove it, bro. What? Yeah, exactly. You can't even ollie up a curb. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> but yeah, I shout out to skateboarding. That's what, what do you think about? First. <laughs> what do you think about the market now and more states coming online? Do you do you foresee yourself like starting to hop around and get involved in other areas? Or? Yeah, I've I've been going to states i've been seeing shit but it's like like what's your favorite market outside of cali right now in the state i mean i'm loving what new york is doing right now it feels like cali 10 years ago the way it's just like so raw and just everyone's just getting it right now and people are barely forming brands and just out there on the street you're just walking down someone got every a smoke six shop foot table weed. just selling weed on the Great. sidewalk you walk by a head shop they got weed in there it's just the, the new york market is crazy right now dude it's yeah. it's going crazy like i don't even i like Cali didn't even go this crazy. And it's yeah. because the amount of people and foot traffic, like you said, it's crazy. You're trying to smoke a blunt and a thousand yeah. people walk by. I mean, it doesn't stop. We, we stepped out on 420 to smoke. And I swear this guy was on the corner. Obviously dude dealing with some real shit. The whole time he was like, Oh, like he didn't stop one fucking time. By the end, I was like, shut the fuck up. As we were leaving, I just had to like, get it out. I was like, yo, shut the fuck up. You got this he, he, he didn't even, it didn't, he, he didn't even not. He was in his own world. Like the guy just kept going on and on and on. And we're just like, yo, he was hitting. It's the a notes. lot to fucking. Just so wake everyone up can picture this, and this be the morning joint right It's here. a guy screaming in the corner Fuck. at the top of his lungs consistently. <coughs> like I, I was impressed with he just was like, yo, he does, wow, that's he a lot of he energy. Even breathe like that's like it's to like, put out that shit. much energy for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. And then you got Pac this guy in the corner talk, yelling bro. at him. Like, this guy, this guy, you would have you been like, whoa. I want to sing along for with sure. him. Yeah, yeah. No, this yeah. guy had a choir voice, you know? But yeah, New York's lit. But I've been like going to other markets and it's just like, it's great that all these states are recognizing it and opening it up. But then you got to think about those markets like, like Oklahoma. Like they're not really known for weed smoking. How many people actually live in the state of Oklahoma? Now, out of that many people, how many of them are actually smoking weed and going to buy weed, right? And then when you look at the Oklahoma market, there's a fucking store in every corner. Everyone got a license. Everyone's selling. So it's like, how many people are really buying weed and are you really going to survive out there? Yes, you can make a brand out there and wait, but like, why start something brand new when, you know, you don't even know what the state is consuming? Or like, you know, there's a lot of states out there. A lot of middle America states are coming, but how many of them are actually smoking weed? Like what's, What's the audience? You know, it's a business. Are you going to actually sell shit or are you just going to sit there and just waste money? That's why once it becomes federally legal or you could cross straight state lines, it's going to be a whole different game. And it's going to be a bunch of mids. I think just that's what the past. game needs. <laughs> e e yeah. e even though it's going to bring a lot of unforeseeable things, 
I think that's the next shift it needs is that you could be an entity and conduct business anywhere in the country. That's what makes America great. Yeah. You know, like be able to cross state lines. Yeah. I just don't have enough faith that they're not going to fuck it up. Like yeah, say, for sure. hey, we want you to pay taxes now. <laughs> it's federally legal or whatever, but you can't do this and we're not allowing you to do that either. And you're like, wait, what? So the part that we thought we might get, we don't get, but we need to pay taxes now. Like that's the more likely scenario, in my opinion, is they give you a little and they ask for a lot. Oh, we're going to give you this now, but uh, you can't move it between states or you have to pay per state. They'll do some wacky shit where it's like, oh, every state it has to go through. There's a fee on the way to the route to where it's got like they're going to do something to not make it as easy as it should be. Of course. Like yeah. just like California did, just like every state comes online. And then doesn't learn from the other 17 states or whatever that have already done it. They literally are like, well, we're going to do it different and we're going to figure it out. And it, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. It's the fucking government. They're going to do what they want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just there's going to be a bunch of big brands out there that are going to monopolize and take it and be like the fucking Budweiser's. And then you're going to have your small craft, your, you know, small shops. You, like I said, you could get like a $2 box of wine or you get like a $2,000 bottle of wine. It depends where you're going, what farm you're getting it from, where the grapes were harvested. It's going to be the same thing with the flowers. Which region is it from? What strain is it? And you're going to, it's going to end up being just like, you know, alcohol. You're going to go to bar. Hopefully we're going to be able to have more places where you can consume cannabis on site. Like you can do with alcohol and pull up so you don't have to go buy weed from the store and you can get it fresh. Like they have it on tap. Like, oh, this just came from our farm. We just dropped this today. Check it out. Mm, get some flavors. <laughs> like just make it regular already. What the What do you think about all the you know, the lack of lounges and places to actually go enjoy? It's yeah, it's whack as shit. I mean, there's a couple spots. Have you been to any that are cool? Uh lounges? Yeah. I mean any space that I can consume cannabis and freely is cool. But you know what I mean? Where you're like, damn, this is like, I'll be back. Uh, like, and then you tell, you know, want to meet, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's been a couple of places like that. Uh, like the headroom gallery was a great spot that I used to right. go frequently when I, even when but I wasn't lately, doing events lately, but there isn't really a spot where you, cause everyone's trying there's to, not one lounge. There's, out you, there. Everyone's trying to tax you. You have to like pay weird fees. You, if you want to smoke there, you have to smoke their shit. Like you can't bring your own. You gotta, it's all weird stuff, dude. That's why that cafe in LA didn't last. You know, it was just, it was super expensive rolls. and the food wasn't <laughs> the best. Like just serve some like French fries and nachos, bro. What's up with these? Like, I appreciate y'all trying to do this health route, but we're stoners, dude. We want some like Mac and cheese. We want like burgers. Like, like, I appreciate your Chicken quinoa wings. salads and shit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good on the quinoa. It's yeah, what I'm really that. craving after an eighth blunt yeah. with a yeah. half a gram of Ross. And, you know, yeah. After I just spent $250 yeah. on a dev hit, let me. <laughs> yeah. it, you know where the line in the sand is for lounges, though? I think is if they have to sell product, right? It becomes this whole thing where like, okay, we have to have a license and we have to sell it. And, or you just say, it's BYOB or bring your own product, right? And then you're just a hospitality, which is what we need to see. Or you just pay like a membership, like a gym and come whenever you want and just use the amenities as you please. You know, if you want to get some snacks, it's just a little extra, but here's a safe place. You know, sometimes I don't want to meet people at my house mm -hmm. to smoke weed, you know? I want to like, where can I meet that? I don't want everyone coming to my crib. Like, what the hell? There's a lot of weirdos out here, bro. So yeah. like, you know, Starbucks are cool or like coffee shops, but like, where can I even that? It's yeah, like, when you dude, smoke there, but you feel rude because there's like mm -hmm. someone might be there with their kids and shit. You're like, I ain't trying to like fuck up their mood. So like, let me get a spot where I could just have a friend meet me and we could chill, get like a little snack or a drink and yeah. just be able to smoke what we want. Talk buy, for a like, bit. You have to buy something like that would be the rule. Like you have to buy it, like limit it one drink or two drinks or one snack or some shit like or get a membership where you just come whenever you want. You don't have to buy shit. What do you got you rolling up there right now? Oh, uh, after that OG, I was, you know, got that Yuzu from Blue. Shout out to my You know what I'm saying? Blue, LA Fave Farms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, see, making man. it happen. He's. He been out here. He's doing it, you know. He's been out here. He ain't really. Uh, uh, he ain't really one to show show face, but he's just making it happen. Just Blue's knows, knows good flowers. This smells great. Yeah, he has one to roll one up. this one. 
You want to roll it? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> so sure. I'm super Keep lit. It. I haven't smoked a blunt like that in a long time. I'm lit. Oh, yeah, uh, that's what we do all day, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Yo, go. just so you know, Adam Ill. There's no way I'm smokes. doing that. I'm working out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I'm laughing. Hi, baby. I'm <laughs> real life. He's like literally in the gym <laughs> training to smoke more weed. Yeah. On OGs in like pearls and shit, like the ultimate level of like, woo. Yeah. Shit's Here impressive. we go. You're, uh, you got the Zaw Olympics coming out. Shout out to Green One. Yeah, Zaw yeah. Olympics. Hosting that. Yeah, I'm going to be hosting that. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, yeah. but yeah, we're hosting the Zaw Olympics. We're like, yeah, making it happen, you know? Got to got to rep. I love Green Wolf. Been uh, fucking with them for years. They've always been, you know, making it happen. They were part of the village back in the day. So uh, shout out. Shout out to the Three Musketeers. <laughs> if you know, you know. Them yes, dudes are sir. OGs. Super OGs. Yes, sir. Yeah. My boys, my boys coming through, man. Yeah, yeah, it's They're cool. Like, it done. but the Olympics, like you know, I'm like you said, like, do you get nervous? It's like that's like you know a big event. Like everyone who anyone's gonna be there, and then you got you know I'm gonna be hosting it. Like you know, how are people feeling? How am I gonna read the crowd? Is it gonna be like a cool hype crowd? Are we gonna turn up or is it gonna be more like chill, mellow, like fuck around? Like you know, you we gotta got to turn that bitch up. We got to see. I already talked to B about it, and all of them. Turn up, man. We gotta turn up. Turn this shit up, man. Get I'm, the energy high. Yeah. Everyone yeah. can't just be standing around eating hot dogs, smoking weed, and shit. Like this is not the vibe. So we you turn know? it. Up. I know they turn got, this shit up. They got Gucci Mane coming. Yeah, they had B real be out there burner. What uh, you know, the boys gonna have to bring the energy. Gucci's right? a big name. That's huge. Yeah. Hopefully, you bring some energy. Shout out, to, shout out to Be Real, by See, the way. I, I appreciate yeah, Be Real. Bro, he, uh, you know, big I, I dog was, right there. I, I was fortunate enough to be on Be Real TV for three years and, you know, got to do my show on there, been a part of, like, the network. So shout out to Be Real. You know, that also helped me a little bit with my network and getting bigger guests on my show, being able to, like, not do a show from my studio apartment because that's where, you know, my podcast started is in, like, my apartment and being able to have an actual studio to create, you know, my show and, do what I do with him and his crew. So I just want to give a shout out because, you know, we were growing up quoting his songs all day too. So big yeah, shout out. Real. Shout out to me. I know he was your big hundred guest too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just yeah. had him on, man. Yeah. He's, that, he's, that dude's a legend and, and he hasn't stopped. Like when you see his daily grind he's, and that he doesn't really probably have to do, um, it's crazy. Honestly, like shout out to him, man, for going this hard this long. Yeah, yeah. Not many consistent. people like he was he was doing big shit in the early nineties. Like early nineties. The late nineteen hundreds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, number yeah. one hit song, like, you know, so that's fucking crazy. So shout out to him, man. He's Not many people are doing it that long, yeah, that hard at mm -hmm. that level, and they're still touring the world to this fucking day. Bro, we we were seeing him. He was about to go play a huge like reggae roots festival or something. Cali Roots Cali Fest. Cali yeah. Roots Fest. And then he flies back the next day and he's back on Be Real TV. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, man. Yeah. He had just come from Germany the week before. Yeah. Like, you don't realize until like, I mean, in his crew. He's a rock star, bro. Yeah, his Guy's crew is all OGs it. too, though. Everyone around him is like OGs from <coughs> their, their separate niches, right? It's yeah. like that guy's one of the head growers. He's been the guy, Kenji, obviously. You got yeah. Cali Blaze. You got, I mean, Zen Dog. You got all these yeah. people that have touched the plant. Yeah, that, yeah, that would must have been fun. Yeah, That's yeah, dope. oh, it was cool. I got to experience a lot of great things too. You know, Cypress Hill concerts, and then that was the Prophet of Rage. You know, when they did the Rage Against the Machine cover or you know fill in, so I got to experience some of that. It, yeah, it was great times, dude. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't be mad, dude. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to that guy. For, you know, I had a lot of great people on the way. Like I mentioned, Swerve earlier with Cali Connection, it's OG in the genetics and clones and help, hooking people up with. OG, like he made it very accessible to people, which kind of, you know, made a lot of people upset because that was, you know, the bread and butter back then. And, you know, you just here you go. <laughs> yeah. One of the guys that like really put Tahoe on the map. Yeah. You he know? had the Tahoe and the Larry and the Sour mm -hmm. and the he had the Blackwater. Yeah. He had a. Uh, we grew some of that. Yeah. Yeah. He had a couple of the chems. I think he had like the chem 91s and the chem Valley. Yeah, man, I was, I was, I learned a lot, you know, over there for a couple of years and got to meet a lot of people. You know, I had a cool little fucking weed, you know, it's just going good. I got to meet a lot of legends. Never thought I would. A lot of stoner boner moments, you know, when you're 15, you're talking about, you know, having your own weed strain or smoking with, you know, certain celebrities or, you know, 
winning a cannabis cup, having an award winning. Like, you're just like living these moments. You're like, damn, what do, what's really, what is life? <laughs> now you're on first smoke of the day. Y'all fucking oh, in the year just making it the biggest show out here, dog. Y'all are killing it. Bro, we're just trying to stay consistent, man. That's it's, all it's been. It's the recipe that Adam said. Consistency. What do you bring to the table different? Yeah. Right? And then being passionate about what you're doing. You got to be obsessed with whatever you're doing seven days a week. Yeah, Otherwise, I see how you, you smoke weed, dude. You like really analyze that shit. We were smoking a little joint before the show and you like, we're like analyzing it and getting the taste and talking about the flavor. I was like, this fool is like serious about it. I, he, pack <laughs> over. Don't bring, don't bring up growing. Don't bring nothing. Yeah, my up bad. Here. I'll enter <laughs> yeah. It'll start going on and on. It's every no, day. I appreciate I'm passionate it. about this yeah. as well, just like you are and just like he is. I have no patience for it, dude. I can't sit in a room all day and work like you guys are. I don't know how you guys do it. And I appreciate y'all. The older I get, the the less I want to just sit in the room. But yeah, did well, you did you have a boot at one of these events? Mm -hmm, bunch of them. Like, man, were you, at, were you at a chalice event? Yeah. Our first event. That's where we always would see you and say what up. Because I think I came and got some of your speed. weed like a mm -hmm. couple years ago, and I was like, yo, this shit is fucking fire. And then I didn't see you for a couple, and I was like, where do these guys go? Where? Who? I always had we Prop always sixty four. Yeah, and that, and we always had. <laughs> <sm> <laughs> For real. Real. we always had small yeah. spots like all of our spots were like boutique like small rooms small amount of lights compared to like what is going on and so i love that craft cannabis dude that's I, we need more of that you know and robberies bro oh Being man in downtown like we learned we some hard, lessons. hard lessons yeah. I, I, I know all already, about that. Yeah. I, that's why I say obstacles you know i keep yeah. it really broad you gotta fall back so we all we all deal with shit re, you know re, you know reassess yeah but Shout out to this dude about to drop in the rec market. Dream yeah. come true. Let's man. go. Maybe both of us, right? Yee. Dream come true. Yeah. So and we got to come through the apothecary and, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And that's why I like stopped. You know, I was doing some things and helping people out and, you know, whatever. It's been long enough, dude. I was like selling a lot of weed. You know what I'm saying? I was meeting and networking and shit. And then I started getting these gigs, you know, and I was like, you know, I'm going to stop selling this shit because I'm going to work on, you know, the content because no one was doing this shit. When I started podcasting, there's probably one other weed podcast show in 2009 out of Colorado. And they were just like a news, like monotone, like, hey, we're a pot show. And I was, you know, just like, we need some, some life in this plant, dude. This shit, we need to give this shit some personality, you know? And, you know, Jack was the face for all aspects. And unfortunately, he left us real early. And, you know, we were just trying to keep that passion alive and keep, educating people on the benefits of cannabis not just cannabis and hemp and all the uses we have with it and that's how it all started bro and now i just smoke a lot of weed and talk a lot of shit <laughs> you keep it going though you inspire a lot of people and it's cool to see you being active and going against the stereotype and shit that's something i'm definitely passionate yeah. about and then the events same shit is that we got to do better with the events, you know, look at alcohol and look what they've done with events. You know what I mean? Like people have a blast. I mean, they come from all over to go to those events. Yeah. That's, and it's a celebration feeling. It's high energy. Everyone's on the move. Everyone's doing stuff. There's activities, music, food, places to sit. You know what I mean? Good drinks, obviously. Um, just add in weed. That's yeah. it. Just add in fucking weed. I mean, they're starting like, to do know. it slowly. There's little yeah, like yeah, smoking it's getting, sections. It's, it's getting it's more getting there. It trickling into yeah. the mainstream, I'll say. But um, we got a long ways to go. And I, I the other thing I could say is is lounges. We got to see some good lounges popping up. Just these consumption you know? areas, just like places to. There's some. There's hang. some obviously in New York and shit. I don't. You know. I don't want to. We don't want to catch no flack or nothing. But yeah. But some licensed. Like I'm talking licensed legal lounges, like with you know them catching up to that like I, i've heard vegas has went but i still haven't seen a, mm -hmm. a lounge or anything you know i've heard la is good but i still haven't seen yeah. like you dougie know. was ahead of his time with that he he was I one was of the guys the coffee yeah. shop was an amazing spot Looking i was gonna back. bring that up when we were talking when i was talking about earlier when i started with the headroom gallery coffee shop was that he'd had on la brea i mean the only thing was parking was a huge issue mm -hmm. over there and it was like he had a, a great spot people could come and hang out network you know it was just Parking sucked in. It was, how do you monetize on it? You know, that's the key. How do you monetize? I took my mom there. She doesn't smoke. And I took my stepdad. They had coffee and tea and I rolled up a joint, smoked it. 
and they love just being there and being like, wow, yeah. this is cool as hell. I haven't people were consuming. And then, you know, they like to analyze like, wow, they're having a good convo. They're not just stoned out of their mind. Right. Like older people need to see that it's a social thing yeah, as well. I've been, always been about changing the stigma. You know, yeah. there's a stereotype that we have that we're just lazy, unmotivated. We have no dreams. We just sit on the couch and play video games and eat food. I mean, I love sitting on the couch playing video games and eating food, but that's not all that is about me. So, you know, just being out there and, you know, just showing that there's more to us than just consuming cannabis. There's more to life than just weed. Yes, it's a great part of it. It's a great foundation to build friendships. That's how it brings a lot of people together. It's made me travel all around the world, dude. I've fucking been to Jamaica because of weed and Europe because of weed. You know, I've been all over the globe because of weed. So it's a great plan. It's just, you know, it's just still people still frown on it. That whole propaganda propaganda stage still affects people. And we just need to let people know we're not, we're not bad people because we smoke weed. We're regular. <laughs> we just, you know, prefer to consume cannabis instead of consuming other products. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point in media coverage, like weed smokers is like low, like low on the totem pole of like, being controversial they they like you know what i mean like it's majority's already voted everyone knows everyone knows a handful of people that smoke weed every day that live totally normal lives like even the people that don't smoke weed that are older and shit but yeah it'll be it'll be a generational thing and we'll you know it's gonna just take a lot longer than expected but um it's cool to see like globally all these other emerging places that are like spain's out killing and it barcelona and had a glass yeah yeah, Amsterdam is uh, doing it, but they're trying to throw all these rules on there. But yeah, it, it's they're it's fucking getting with it a lot over there, which sucks because they have it right on the lounge coffee shop end, mm -hmm. but we have it right on the production and retail end. So <laughs> it just needs to all be combined, yeah, you know, and make sense of it somehow. Just for like one full experience, like someone will here's where it you out. buy it, here's where you smoke it, here's where you leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simple. You I know, mean, they don't and really, there's food and drinks. Yeah. You know? They don't really check people huh. when they leave bars after they've been sitting there for hours watching sports games or whatever. Like, I'd yeah, want to sit in a place where I could consume cannabis and watch fucking a UFC fight or a, a football game or something with like other like minded individuals. Like, sometimes those drunks get a little rowdy. Like, it's entertaining, but sometimes it's annoying. And I just want to chill with other people. We just smoke weed and shoot the shit and talk about other things because. Like I said, especially, cannabis is a great foundation to build a friendship, but there's more to us than just cannabis. Yeah. Especially if you're not a drinker. Yeah. Like there's nothing worse than going to a bar with a bunch of people drinking and you're not drinking. <laughs> that shit's the worst. Like it doesn't matter who you are. Like I don't care if you've been in AA forever. It's like not ideal situation. You know, the, every other shot, they're like, dude, come on, man. Come on. Like It's like never, you know, it's like when you just go and people are smoking weed, it's like, even if someone doesn't smoke weed, it's like, oh, no, I don't smoke. Oh, no problem. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> rarely is there a yeah. bunch of force. I don't need to us. give you a joint. Yeah. <laughs> Two <laughs> things, right? Two things. The person who cracks that code for that hospitality part is going to find how much real money and how much. Of a bag. Yeah. That's the next wave. Uh, yeah. Right. Consumption. I got you. And then the second Experience. Thing. Hospitality. Uh, I'm taking uh, notes. Yeah. No, it's just hard to find a spot to do it. Um, I mean, you need a couple, you know, there's a couple things you need. Parking is a big issue because you need people to, you don't want people fighting for parking or getting parking tickets. That's always bullshit. Security is a big issue because everyone's thinking, you know, people are walking in with lots of weed and money. So you got to get that and just, you know, a safe location where if you don't own it, you know, the landlord's cool with what you're doing because, you know, once they find out there's weed involved, they always want to fuck with you or make the lease or rent more expensive or you know see what the hell how they can get involved and fuck the shit up yeah this <laughs> big smoke <laughs> been a fun one with you bro what exactly we got to get into more on off the mic if you guys haven't already get on fsotd.com go sign up catch my man adam mill off the mic we're going we're gonna to hang out of this, have a few more of these blunts, get into this. <laughs> How do you like the Leafs? Get into this yuzu. I, I like, like it. it. I like it. It you rolled got nice lit. and easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's that, that's that, that's that, <laughs> sit, that's that sit back in your chair smoke right there. Yeah, oh, that chilling. nightcap. That For OG me, that's blunt. like a nightcap. So imagine that as a dab. Would I'm you be down? Would you be down to do a blunt, Rosin? I'm always open, yuzu. man. I'm, I'm, I'm in this. 
Should we dab a, some blunt rosin? <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't have any right now. They're going to take my heady status I away, but I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is that so bad? Why is blunt rosin nah. so bad? Like blunt- people are just haters, and I, put some piatella in there. Have fun with life. That's yeah, no, the best I, thing you could say. Have fun with like, life. It's a, Be such fun. a unique terp, dude. Like, I, like people smoke blunts. People smoke dabs. Like, why not just put them together and just smoke the blunt rosin? It's a delicious taste. You don't have to do it every single time. I mean, it is a fucking try it out though, right? You know, right? And then form an opinion. You like, get like the of- spins or something. Uh, I mean, you get a little, you know, you get that nice head high. <laughs> Your heart starts beating a little bit. But it's those tobacco terps, you know what I'm saying? It's a tobacco hash. What, what do you <laughs> like? Like, I think terps are a big thing. A lot of people don't understand. They just look at weed and think it's good. I've looked, I've looked at weed that was amazing. I'm like, damn, this shit is looks fantastic. The crystals are intact. The nug structure is amazing. The color is beautiful. The and then you smoke it. It's like chuck. Like what? What is this? Tastes like smoke, like charred smoke. Yeah, like, 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 like what oh, is this, shit. dude? And it burns like shit. Yeah, keep gotta keep lighting it. Ash is like just there's no no cap to it. Nothing. It's you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a lot of that's a lot of a lot of the flour on the market. It's people growing for yield. It's people not curing it right. It's there's a lot of factors. They to want it. that. The it's like you said, almost, the rush. Though. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're on a schedule. We gotta every yeah. sixty days. And I feel like social media also kind of because everyone wants that to look good and they want to like get that clout and well, get what's and hot in the market. The other part is it's a lot of people that don't smoke and they're like, dude, look at this. Yeah. And it's like, bro, you. PGR, PM shit. It's look not- at what though? It's like <laughs> smoky. You got to smoke it. You got to hit it. I had someone show me. They came to the shop. It was like back in the 215 days and they dropped it. It was like a fucking covered in PM. They're like, bro, we can't take this. They go, what? Look at all the crystals. I was like, bro. <laughs> not crystals bro i don't know who it's told you that mildew, buddy at least you don't <laughs> see that as much in the market you know <laughs> hey hey I, when was the last time you went to one of these warehouse sessions dog with all the with all the trap fools? it's been a while it's yeah, been a little we, bit I, there's one we're, every day out here in la 500 man yeah. <laughs> there's one every day in la I Yo, can take extra you. crystals over here man <laughs> spider might og Yo, yeah. you yeah. see some like bud rot mold. Like people don't know; they're not educated. That's what I'm saying. They just see like a low price and like, oh, I'm gonna make money off this shit. I, all I need is a cool bag, and I put it in a fucking bag and whatever. Send it to wherever they go, and you know that's what fucked up the game. Everyone's just they can get rid of anything now. <laughs> we need you to start an education show. Yeah, what to look for, Mister Adam Hill. I mean, that's you know that's I'll how be we're all started. Substitute teacher for the day. Yeah, hello, Mister <laughs> Hill. Hi. Yeah, that's real. I mean, that's that's how it all started. Being a butt tender, you know, I learned that no one knows what the fuck they're trying to get when they come in. They're overwhelmed. So, just what does good weed look like? Like, you could give me a bunch of beer. I don't know what good beer is because I don't drink beer regularly. My taste buds don't mm-hmm. differentiate. But like with weed, I can understand look, smell, taste. You know how it burns, all that. It's it's a it's a thing that we learn as we the more we do it. So. A lot of people don't have that experience. They're in Kentucky smoking whatever they get and thinking it's fire, but we know that Kentucky is not getting the best weed. They're getting whatever is left over. <laughs> Going to Kentucky. No hate on Kentucky. I unless love you, y'all, dude. And, and, unless you know somebody growing in a barn or something. Yeah, but that's what that comes out to the, you know, who you know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Shout who out Louisa, have. Kentucky. Do you guys know good weed in Kentucky? No, he's he, he is. Are you from you know Kentucky? Uh, yeah, he's I spent a lot of summers Kentucky. out there. I oh, spent no. some summers in Torchlight, and uh, it's right outside of Louisa. And shout uh, out to Kentucky, man. How, we got, how's we got in Kentucky? As soon as I posted that I was, I used to spend time in Kentucky. I had some growers hit me up like, "Yo, we out here, big dog." Yes, sir. And I was like, "Hell was yeah, salute, baby, salute." So you had yeah. any Kentucky grown weed? I haven't had any yet, but what's been cool about this show and like, I, you know, better than anyone, you go somewhere and you get to meet the people that are just as passionate as you in that area. And it's like, you find hidden gems and especially with growing, like people can be by themselves in a little house with one light up and that shit can be fire. So it's, uh, yeah, but that's how many times are they, you getting access to that yield. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They got one room, fucking <laughs> one table and they're growing it. They're going to smoke most of it. They're going to hook their homies up. And it's like, are you going to see it ever again? No. Are they Are they cloning it? Do they have the mom? Do they know where it came from? Did it start from a seed? Like there's so many factors with these plants and genetics. Like that's what I'm saying. There's some weed that I wish I could smoke that I probably won't ever see again. And it's just sad. Because people are like, there's a lot of egos and people want to be like, 
oh, this is mine. I'm the first. And it's like, why not just like let everyone have access to it? Cause you never know what's going to happen. And like those, those, those ladies that blossomed into something beautiful that we enjoy mm -hmm. is now gone because of egos. And you guys, you learn that over time. I've <laughs> lost some of my best genetics thinking I can't let this out. I can't even give this to anyone close to me. And then four or five years later, I'll lose the cut. And I'm like, you idiot. Like, why wouldn't you have just shared it to then be able to get it back? Because some of this stuff, it's hard to hold things down for eight years, 12 years, 14 years. Yeah. In that 14 years, if something happens and you lose that strain and you've been holding on to it because you, you can't trust anyone else, it's that double-edged sword of like, I've lost some of my best stuff that way. And that's me keeping 60 strains alive a lot of times. I'm glad you're saying it. You know, I'm not oh, a girl, it's I know how hard it oh, is, but good that's what I'm saying. Like, you have some it close is. homies that you probably could have. <laughs> what strain? Get over here, Pac. You're my he buddy. <laughs> what strain was it? Huh? You no, no. We've. Uh, no, no. He, 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 uh. I just know he's always like hoarded shit. He, he, he would even hoard straight. Yeah, I'm the hoarder. If I, if, like he would be worried about me even trying to get some or something. Like Everybody. Yeah. yeah. I came up in a weird shit. time. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, you, I didn't mean to come at you like that. You, but you, know, but you, you know what I'm saying, right? I'm glad you, you understand. No feeling, it's no feeling. If you want to get you to. Understand. Uh, you understand. You want to get to Blackleaf, try to fuck with his plants. And uh, you'll get to him real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't really turn up out. much. I'm pretty chill, but yeah, I'll turn the pets. fuck what up. Have you lost? He has plans. <laughs> yeah. What have you lost that you wish you had so? Oh, man. What have I lost? Uh, like, don't even get me started. <laughs> Pac's going to start making fun of me. And like, I could dive into this for Florida Juicy Fruit. Juicy Fruit. Yeah, the Juicy Fruit out of Florida. We well, used to have a strain called Florida Juicy Fruit. Great fruit, man. That's there's another see pack he's gonna egg me on and I'll start going for twenty minutes about that this fucking sour diesel, bro. Yeah, another, bro, where's that at? Thanks to Pack. I mean, we Ooh. we had one of the best sours out, bro. He he's where he's the it? sour plug, dog. Nah, nah. <laughs> we were in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we're from the we East Coast, in Florida, but not out here. This was like you know there was, was some a little while ago. Oh, two thousand. There was a lot of sour in Florida though. Yeah, this is when that was, you know, sour purple Kush. Yeah, like now that. yeah, now it's. I miss haze. I miss purple Urkel a lot, like mm -hmm. the real Urkel. Yeah. People say they have it, like but God's then I've gifts. tried it, and yeah, yeah, God Bud, one of the gnarliest ones. You know what was interesting? Death Star. I thought Death Star would do great out here because it's a diesel, and I'm like, well, they like OG. Well, they like Sensi Star out here a lot. I remember yeah. that was a big. They weren't feeling Death diesels. Yeah. Any diesel that's not sour. Any of the heavier no, I remember a New York diesel was going around for a minute that people were on. I don't know, man. I just miss like sour, like sour OG, just something like that. Where's a sour OG? Or like, you know, a, a haze. Amnesia. Can I get an amnesia? Hey, did everyone forget about it? Did they get amnesia after smoking? Just go it? to damn. <laughs> no, it's not. I went there. You don't think so? They didn't have it, bro. I went there. All they have are California's all and desserts. All yeah. they, I'm they, smoking RS11. Like the, the, the oh, yeah. <laughs> they had the rainbows and the cones. runs. We smoked and the, the same shit out there. They're like, oh, we got the California. I was like, no, I don't want the California. I'm from California, dude. <laughs> you fly all the way from LA to Amsterdam. I you touch was, down and you're like, what's on the menu? And they're like, RS11 by Wizard Trees, Tenko, uh, Blue Zushi and Yellow Zushi. You're like, uh, like can I get some like locally grown And then half the time you get it and you're like, this isn't. <laughs> so, right? you, guys, just you guys bag. bought the smalls and put it in the got regular him. bag you got no, me no not <laughs> even that totally different you know flower yeah i like yeah. smalls dude like if they're good if it's good weed i like smalls i roll I up all the too. time i don't need big old buds like smalls are decent i'll go a lot of times it's the top of the nug <laughs> that breaks off yeah, it's like the top of the Christmas tree. A lot of times, it's that little top when you put it in a bag. So less, it's the best, of the best. Less stem in the nugs. You know what I'm saying? Easier to break up. I feel like they they are they're more potent because it's just like the smaller nugs. They don't have to focus on the bigger buds. <laughs> Give me the smells all day. <laughs> the lit ills. <laughs> Very few people have smoked as much OG as this guy right here. It was a pleasure having you on, bro. Like super stoked to what? finally sit down. I, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, we learned a lot. And uh, I, I like that I got you really high, bro. I'm lit up. Sm slit the OG blunt, Let's dude. Let's the, the, the 818 way, baby. <laughs> I'm ready for some blunt rosin after this on Off the Mic. Let's go. <laughs> you got the press. I'm ready to make it. Shout out to everybody, man. Yes. It's Adam Ill, first smoke of the day, episode 102. We appreciate you guys. Peace. Bye. Hey, if you like this episode and you want to see more episodes just like it, 
I need you to click right here. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate it. Yo, yo, yo. Right here.